This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello everybody and welcome to this Let's Play. I am joined by Jim and Jen. Jim, you will know, is our historical editor on the website. We are not playing historical. No, I we know, aren't. shock horror. We're not playing historical. Ah! We're playing a sci-fi game that you guys have been working on, yeah? Yes, yeah. that is true. We are going to be taking a stab at Dark Star. Dark Star is our game of tactical starship naval combat in the far-off 26th century. Far off in the future, yes. there is still war. There is, is, uh, there is yes. still small, petty, nasty colonial little wars. Just our favorite kind. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's this about petty colonial wars? I'm, I'm, I'm petty, playing the British. Petty, well, everybody in this, in this universe is, a, uh, is an empire of some kind or another, and the reason we do that specifically mm -hmm. is so that anybody can play anybody. Uh, There's no cold war of this coalition versus that coalition. Uh, Only certain guys can play certain other guys. It's always just, hey, I got some Japanese ships I want to play. I got some British ships I want to play. Do you want to have a game? Yeah, Let's throw okay. down. I, I, I have to say, the ships that you've made for this oh. are lovely. There you go. So... These little guys, I'll get you some close-ups of these, but they're, they're actually layered card that you've actually cut and shaped. And oh, yeah, they're completely scratch-built. But for such a simple design, they, they really get the message across of what you're looking at. What are you talking about simple, man? These things are... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> they're literally just... They're, I, I, barely, I wouldn't even call them miniatures. They're playing pieces. Uh, they are 3D, and, and we tried to make them camera-friendly and, uh, and make yeah. them look a little nicer than usual. Yeah, if I could get my... My little ship to stand up, that's fine. So not quite Hex Encounter. I know I'm known as the Hex Encounter guy. These are Hex and playing pieces. Yeah. How about that? But the beauty of it is, is if you don't want to go through all the hassle of actually building a scratch-built card ship, mm. you can just cut out a little shape. Oh, yeah, the little triangles? Put, so you know, we there. use these for fighter craft and things like that, but mm. you could just cut out little shapes. Yeah, but I quite like these. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yeah. But, you know, the average person might not want to spend that kind of time, but if they like the idea of this game... Yeah. Little triangles, little shapes, mm. put the label on it, and boom, off you go. Yeah. It doesn't require a lot of intensive work. Or you could yeah. take it one step further and play it online uh, over uh, some sort of a visual uh, medium, like yeah. we are doing uh, with the uh, Bolt Action Boot Camp, yes. either through Excel or PowerPoint. Yeah, no, I, I'm very curious to actually see maybe this played online, Jim, because having seen what you were able to do with the Excel and have forces and stuff moving around at Big Hack's map, looked really cool to me. Yeah. This game, however, we're playing the basic rule set that you guys have been working on six years now? Oh uh, yeah, about six no. years we've been we've been playing around with this and constantly mm -hmm. tweaking it and constantly rewriting it. Mm -hmm. um, it started off just as a, a dining room publishing project for our, our local group back down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, mm -hmm. where all of our players are. We sat down one weekend and just made a list of all of our favorite uh, sci-fi franchises, be it in print or movies or, mm -hmm. or television programs. Everything we liked and didn't like, made up a bucket list and built a universe that fit that model. Nice. And you guys have like full background and stuff already online, yeah? Oh, wow, oh. yeah. So the, in the projects, this is the one reason that this, that this game came up for a Let's Play, is um, we wanted to highlight what the projects feature on, on Tabletop can really do. Mm -hmm. So Dark Star started off almost as like, oh, they've started this new projects feature. Let me put something on there just so I can say I put something on there. Mm -hmm. And before we knew it, we were one of the most recommended projects on the site. Um, and it's, there's not a miniature in sight. It's all about rules, it's all about battle reports. And the point is, if you're not the best a painter or you're, you don't feel like you're a great painter, you don't have a huge collection, you know, we're not all Suetonius Polinus, okay? Oh, yeah. um, you can get stuck in to the projects feature on Beasts of War without, you know, and, and explore other avenues of the hobby. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, I'm very excited for this because this is kind of a rematch for me and you. I'm looking a little bit of redemption, even though you made this game. Oh, I'm, no. I'm kind of looking to kick okay. your ass a little bit. Well, that's okay. That's why I'm here to help Justin yeah, to yeah. maybe the two of us together can yeah. uh, take yeah. on James. Yeah. Yeah. Save me! <laughs> <laughs> well, you're playing the British, which is yeah. the fleet that I'm most comfortable with. Okay. One of the beauties of the system is if you do keep playing, you can develop your ships. Mm -hmm. Now... Unfortunately, you're not playing with my ships, which have about six years worth of experience and upgrades in them. Yeah. But uh, we've gotten you a good fleet. We've okay. got you a good fleet. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing my stuff, even though it's old, it might just be like fresh out of the refitting yards? Yes. And okay. uh, uh, we'll get into the details on this in just a little bit, but basically we've got three ships. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we've got two fleets, each of three ships. Yeah. A heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. Okay. So s large, medium, and small. Um, the difference is, and again, uh, Justin is playing uh, the, the Royal Navy of, uh, of the United Kingdom, 
And uh, his ships are an Iron Duke class heavy cruiser, mm -hmm. HMS Coleraine. <laughs> um, there is a uh, Indomitable class light cruiser, HMS Warzan. And uh, screening the fleet, okay, and probably the most advanced ship in the fleet, believe it or not, as far as electronics and targeting, is uh, a HMS um, Dignity. HMS Dignity. <laughs> Our scrappy little a destroyer. A Falklands class destroyer. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> so, in the far future, Beast of War is still out there um, conquering the stars. Uh, the Japanese have something very similar. We have a Katana class heavy cruiser, a um, Hokkaido class uh, light cruiser, and a um, Kaguma class uh, destroyer. So, Basically, again, small, medium, and large. Mm. Lots of rail guns, lots of lasers, and you know, just ready to start, uh, you know, kicking the hell out of each other. Yeah. Okay. So how do we begin again? Okay. So we would begin the game uh, with, okay, here's the little area that we're playing on. Yeah. So we have our space. Yep. We have our space. We have lots of space. We, every hex on this uh, table is 180 kilometers across. Yeah. Every minute, I'm sorry, every turn is one minute of time, mm -hmm. and the reason we wanted to do that was so that every time you move a velocity point, a ship travels one hex on the map, on the map that's three kilometers per second. And we wanted that just so we could get a rough idea of how fast uh, things could go in relation to real life space objects. Mm. So Voyager 2 has a thrust, or, I'm sorry, has a velocity of four or maybe five mm. on this map. That's the average speed that these ships actually travel at once they get into close gunnery range. Gotcha. During approaches, they're going a lot faster. And in the background, you can read about our rules for FTL and everything else like that. But for straight out gunnery combat, once you get close in the middle of the map, you yeah. slow down to about 20 or 30 kilometers per second, right. which in this game is really slow. And uh, yeah, that's when, that's when things get hairy. Okay, well, uh, let's get set up and go for round one then. Okay, so okay. the first thing that we would do is, yeah. whatever the objectives of the scenario were, we're just gonna have a gun battle here. Okay. Control of this space, control of this small moon that we have over here yeah. um, is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have control of this small moon, that's going to be the objectives of the scenario. Uh -huh. And what we're going to be aiming at here is, okay, the first thing we do is we're coming into the battle space. So we're going to declare an initial velocity. I am tired of what the Royal Navy has been doing out here. You've been harboring uh, privateers, you've been setting up these small uh, illegal trading uh, installations on my okay. moons. I'm coming in hot and heavy on a velocity of let's say 12. Okay. Just for fun. That's stupid fast. <laughs> it uh, is. Now, the speed you want to come in at depends on if you want to close fast and fight or yeah. if you want to hang back and try and ping at him from a distance. I love the Royal Navy, but the Royal Navy's power is when she gets up close and can hit you with the guns. So I kind of want to go super quick here? I would, I would agree too. I would want to close in fast because the quicker you get in, the quicker you can do damage to him. Okay. So you just put your initial velocity in that first column. Okay, uh, what do I want to go for? Would, would you really want to go 12? Uh, well... That's actually an excellent question. Let's talk about that real fast. This is a speed. movement game. This is a game where that has no movement rate. You're in space. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. The problem is the faster you're going, the longer it's going to take you to slow down. And the faster you're going, the, the harder it is going to be to turn. So the faster you're traveling, the less maneuverable you are. Okay. It's the I classic dilemma trade-off. I would look at, you look at your ship's thrust. Yeah. That's how many points you have to spend uh -huh. to either slow down or turn. Uh -huh. And then if you look in the chart next to it, yeah. you'll see the cost at speed. So if you uh -huh. come in at 12, you'll see, I think it's a four next yep. to it, right? Uh, yes. If you, so you, if you come in at 12 to make one facing change, it's going to cost you four points to turn. God. And that so is you, all your heavy cruiser has. And that has. is all your heavy cruiser can do. Right. Now, when you're coming on, it's not so bad, as long as you at least have enough to make one facing change. Okay. You never want to come in and not be able to make a facing change. I would recommend 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with 10 with that. Okay. And I think I'm going to go 10 overall, because I think it'll let me slow down a little quicker. Justin has just made his first correct tactical decision of Dark Star. <laughs> Keep your fleet, fleet together. together. Do not scatter all over the stars because now your ships can't support each other. Uh, it's not even that. I'm thinking, I know you're going 12, so if I'm going 10, I'll be able to slow down a little quicker and get my maneuverable side of things up a little quicker and be able to get on you a little better or get myself out of trouble a little quicker. That is probably true. I do have, however, a slight edge in speed. My Japanese ships are a little bit faster than his. Uh -huh. His gunners are more accurate than mine. My ships are a little bit, have a little bit extra thrust, so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get away with that, that higher initial uh, approach velocity. Okay. So now that we have initial velocity, let's go ahead and get some initiative going. Okay. okay. Uh, what are we rolling? We roll D6s for initiative. Okay. So Each ship rolls an initiative dice. Okay. Release. Now this is where your advantage comes in. 
And they are roll all of these together. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is each ship is because each ship has a different uh, a different thrust. Uh huh. So you basically take your ship's thrust, uh -huh. you roll the result of a d6, uh -huh. and then you're also adding a plus two because of your more experienced crews and officers. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will roll for the the Korean first. Thrust yep. of four becomes a six. Becomes mm -hmm. a six plus this result, for a, a three. three. That's so that becomes eight. a. What do we say? Uh, no, it's nine. It's nine? A nine. Yeah. nine. So you so put a nine there. There you go. So nine on the initiative. Yep. Yep. Okay. So nine, and then and I do that for each one. We do the same day. thing. Yep. There are two ships. The okay. only difference is those ships have a slightly different thrust. Uh, yeah. So five becomes seven plus. Yep. One eight. Six. eight. So Warzan yeah, apparently it. missed the memo that there was a battle. That there was a battle. He's lagging a little He's behind. He's got a faster thrust than the uh, the Colerine and still has a. a Let's see how poor, Dignity does. A poor yeah, initiative. Dignity, she is going oh. for a four. Oh, four plus, plus eight, twelve. Plus eight, twelve. Yep. Dignity got the best initiative of the British fleet with a twelve. That's okay. All right, well, watch out for that green dash. Yep. All right, so uh, the Nagato. That's my heavy cruiser, a Katana class. She has the same thrust, the thrust of four, uh -huh. but her crew is, her officer are not experienced. She doesn't get that plus two. Uh -huh. So she gets a four plus four is an eight for initiative. A six plus two for the, uh, I'm sorry, that's, that's for the destroyer. Uh -huh. A six plus two is also an eight. And a three plus five is an eight. All three of my ships wound up with an eight. That's gonna be easy. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like I wound up with the lowest initiatives. Uh, except for the war zone. She's on okay, the war zone has an eight. So whenever you have a tie, one thing you can do is dice off to make sure, but bef to even break that dice off tie before you even get to that, you go with the heaviest ship first. So my Nagata, which is a heavy cruiser, mm -hmm. and your light cruiser, the Warzan, yeah. both rolled an eight. I automatically lose that tiebreaker because I'm a heavier ship. Got gotcha. you. So I am looking for my heavy cruiser. She's right there by your hand. Which is right here by my hand. Okay, cool. And I declared an initial velocity of 12. Yeah. Cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I have no idea where anybody else is because I lost initiative. I have the worst initiative of the, of the turn. Yeah. However, I'm going to dump my four thrust points okay. into deceleration. Okay. We're basically hitting the brakes. So those yeah. retro rockets are firing. My ending velocity reduces from a 12 to an 8. Gotcha. That ship's movement turn is done. All right. Now we go on to the next Pouris initiative. We're still on 8s. Now yep. we have two lay cruisers. Yep. They're the same class. So now we will actually dice off. Okay. One D6. I'll roll a green. Yep. For a three. A three. And, oh, we have to three. dice that up again. Uh, uh, okay, I barely win with a spot with a uh, with a six. Okay. So on. now your uh, HMS Warzan has to go next. Yeah, Warzan wants to come on. This That's one? a yep. CL one. Yep, that should be okay. a prototype cruiser. All right, and so I've got a velocity of ten. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I can move ten spaces, but if I turn, I'm then using my thrust. Yep. Mm -hmm. So at 10, just to very quickly work this out for myself, it would cost me three points yep. to make a turn. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to here. Yep. I'll spend three to, to make a turn this way. Yep. And then I'll spend the other two in deceleration. Hey, he's got, he's got Folks, it. He's got it down. I can it. kick my feet back and just enjoy the game. There you go. Right, a, a slightly Newtonian physics system in the game, very oversimplified, obviously, but. Mm. But I, I like the feeling that it's it's got some weight and mass to it mm -hmm. because of the velocities and stuff. Oh yeah, you start pushing like these are just heavy cruisers, light cruisers, and destroyers. You start pushing around uh, like you were mentioning the Yamato. You start yeah. pushing around battleships or yeah. American supercarriers around in this game, and it's like right. you have a thrust of two. <laughs> you don't come on at, at twelve. You just chug on the board at a nice leisurely rate, launch all your fighters, and let them deal with the problem. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, your other two at eight. cruiser number two at eight comes in. He's going to do the exact same thing. Ah, uh, now is he in the, the same space as you? He's in the exact same hex. You're allowed three ships in a hex. Ah. It is 180 kilometers. It's 180 oh, kilometers yeah. across. These ships are roughly Star Destroyer size. Is kind of what we're aiming at here. Mm -hmm. So there should be plenty of space in there. There are reasons in the background, if you read the PDFs that are posted in the projects page, why the ships can't you know, get closer than that. This isn't Star Wars where the ships broadside each other practically touching. I won't get into it now. We don't want this video to be 10 hours long. <laughs> the real reason is only three actual miniatures will fit in a hex without them starting to fall over. You wind up with a game of space Jenga going on. It gets, <laughs> it gets, it gets messy. I bet that. Yep. So all three of my ships now have a uh, velocity of uh, eight because okay. those other two ships are doing the same thing. Okay. 
Now, can they not slow down more because they have more thrust? They could do that, but then at the beginning of next turn, they'd have different initial velocities, and gotcha. it becomes tougher to keep the fleet together. Gotcha. Okay. But technically, I'll, yes, you're absolutely right. I'll keep that in mind then. All right, so the next one that will go for me then is the Chlorian. Yep. So we're begging, and it's coming in at speed 10, well, velocity 10. Yep. So I'll actually split up a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here. So. You really want the war zone to go down, don't you? Yeah, there, there's a there's a certain bit of Freudian uh, miniature play here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will just use all four points to slow down because I want to see what happens when I do that. Okay. Just to, to actually test the system. So for a heavy cruiser, that's not a bad that's not a bad idea. Ten is ten is fast for a heavy cruiser. Six. Fast. And you can take uh, a Riskini out of the World War II war games, yeah. but you can't take the World War II war games out of a Riskini. Right. So there's broadside tactics in this game, old right. school battleship. Yeah. And with that heavy cruiser, she's got guns, bow and stern. You yeah. want to be able to bring them both to bear on yeah. your bad guys. Right, the last one, the Dignity. Uh, yep, if I can see that, that counter just for a second, because it's starting to... Oh, is it? Have a little bit of an issue there. We'll fix that in two seconds. There we go. Uh, we're using awesome. blue tack. There we go. <laughs> okay, so so she has another speed of ten. Yep. So Although she is freakishly fast, I think. Yeah. I think she winds up with a she has a thrust of six. I yeah. Think. So she could make two facing changes. Yeah. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'll bring her in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to here. And she'll change her facing like this. Alrighty. Just so that I'm in slightly different axes, but I'm still kind of going in the same direction. She'll then actually not. Oh, do I want to slow down with her? So hang on. At the speed 10, forward yep. that one, it was three points to change, so I've still got three points. So I could slow down by three if I really wanted to, or I can keep going super quick. Or any fraction thereof, yeah. Mm. I think I'll just keep the speed the same on that one. Okay. So that'll be 10 again. Cool. And things that come into play is, is the different factions that you're fighting. Some factions use more torpedoes than others. Mm -hmm. With those factions, you do want to keep your ships together for coverage. Yeah. Factions that don't have as many torpedoes, you can mm -hmm. spread out a little bit because then yeah. you don't have to worry about needing that coverage. Mm -hmm. And that just really comes into play in, on your tactics like that, on if you want to keep them together or let them spread apart. Yeah. Well, my, my, my thinking is I've got my big heavy cruiser and my two lighter ships. They're going to go in and get closer. The bigger ships maybe going to hang back a little bit, see if I can draw you in. Okay. Because if... If I can get in on like the sides or something with two waves, might be a good way to shoot something down. Cool. At least that's that's the thought. Tactics are tactics. So that completes the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, with the last thing, do we have to launch our scouts? Okay. Um, scouts aren't the even. You know what? Do we even want to skip scouts? Let's go ahead and skip scouts, folks. Uh, scouts. Okay. So these ships are like you know a lot of, a lot of the ships in say. Um, Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica, where they launch fighters and those fighters can attack each other, and it's this added dimension to the game. The warships in this particular scenario were picked to, to be uh, kind of easy to play on a first try. Yeah. And uh, so basically, these are the biplanes that get launched off of the back of World War II cruisers, yeah. like scouts yeah. or seaplanes. They're not fighters, they're not uh, bombers, they're not carrying torpedoes or any kind of bombs or uh, heavy missiles. They can make a very, very slight difference in the game, but in a game of, of this nature, I, I would honestly wouldn't even worry about it. Yeah. Fair enough. They just exist, and your ships have them, and you can use them. Sometimes you can use them to help out with torpedoes, or mm. if you've got that ship that's got that one opening, you might want to make a run and see if the they can do it. Yeah. But they're basically there for flavor, because ships this size would always have some sort of screen. Yeah, yeah, and then, I mean, like, say, can they fight? They can fight, they're just very poor at it because they're only scouts. They're yeah, basically so a biplane with a machine gun on the back. Yeah. In a battleship battle, that's not going to make too much of a difference. Mm -hmm. It has happened. That said, there are groups and there are ships that you can play in this game, American supercarriers that will have enough fighters to... To do some serious damage? Just fry a side of a planet in three seconds. Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah you don't even bother shooting at the main ships in those games. You want to take those fighters and bombers out. Dark Star right. includes air, aircraft carriers, includes planetary assaults. There, there's a million and one options in here that we don't want to you know, get super detailed into. Mm -hmm. um, like This is just going to be a straight out gunnery duel between some cruiser groups. Yeah. Cool. So we're on the border. That's know? right. And it's just like, no, 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 Mr. Japanese. I, I think you'll find the border and 
right on that side. Of the borders, <laughs> borders, no, borders don't really exist in space. Like both sides, there's 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 FTL travel in this game, although not really. It's very very slow. There is no FTL communication. So a fleet will set out to colonize a star system, while back on Earth, a treaty is being drawn up that gives that star system to another colonial power. By the time that other fleet arrives where it was going, like a year later, it's no longer legal for them to be there. They don't know that because there's no, they can't pick up the phone and call you yeah. know, Earth. Before they know it, they're having a battle over the planets within the star system, and there are no borders in space. Mm -hmm. well, fair enough. Okay, so we've done our movement. We're uh, ready anything else for a, a game launches, a, uh, well, We're ready for our first round of gunnery. Gunnery. Okay. Time to start shooting at people. Now this is when you count your hexes and you figure out just how far away you are. Okay. Well, so, we're still pretty far away, but I'm guessing yeah. we're probably in range because it's space. Exactly. You'll see the range brackets, mm -hmm. and it's done mm -hmm. by categories and distances. Okay. So you can still do damage up to 21 hexes away, depending on the weapons on your ship. Okay. And that takes into account the ships with the really big guns Got it. that can shoot across the you know state. Got it. So, yeah, this gunnery phase is not going to be particularly amazing because it's, we're, we're not only we're still kind of far away, but we're also pointing kind of bow on. Anyone who's seen a World War I or a World War II battleship knows that you really want to get into a broadside. So the, the ships, as you can see, are still kind of pointing towards each other. There's not going to be a terrible, we're not going to be able to get a lot of gunnery to bear on each other. Mm. But the fleets are closing and we're just starting to send out those first ranging shots. Mm -hmm towards each other. So just to go through this system quickly, I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and take my fire first. So um, my flagship, that's my big heavy cruiser, uh, Mr. IJN Nagato has his forward guns only or is gonna be able to engage at, at this angle. He's got um, two double turrets of 18 teravolt EPCs, so he's electron particle cannons. So these are basically gigantic lightning guns that he's gonna fire at a range of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's at 14 hexes distance. I'm gonna I'm gonna target. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and target cr uh, the heavy cruiser there. The cool red. Okay. Yep. Uh, where because of the way the hex grid lines out, the way that I'm going to be hitting him is on his starboard bow. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that on the sheet, the four corners. Yep, I've got it here. I'm Thanks. at 14 hexes away, which gives me a base to hit of seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is so I'm hitting your port bow. I'm yep. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, starboard bow. Yep. We look at the starboard bow shields of that ship. The starboard bow shields of that ship are Top a four. Top right corner. Uh, shields here yep. is four. Mm -hmm. So I have to subtract four from my hit number uh -huh. to account for your shielding and for your electronic countermeasures and things of that nature. These Japanese ships, like I said, have some really awesome electronics. They do have a, uh, a CIC and bridge bonus of plus two. This is basically we have super high tech uh, targeting equipment. So it's the range. Minus your shields, mm -hmm. plus any bonuses I have for my for my targeting. So uh, he has four for his shields. I have two for my targeting. The base number was seven. Mm -hmm. Seven goes down to three, goes back up to five. My base to hit is a five. Mm -hmm. So if I could have some of those uh, purple dice, Jen, please. Uh, so by saying it's a five, are you trying to roll over or under five? You're trying to roll on um, or under, and all these to hit rolls are on a D10. Okay. So I have two, like I said, two double turrets. I roll once for each gun. Mm -hmm. And I wind up with absolutely Ooh. nothing. So the, 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 the stars flash white as the Japanese heavy cruiser fires off all her biggest guns firing forward. And uh, it's, a very, it's a very pretty light show, I'll <laughs> say that. The Aurora Borealis is just is dazzling across, across the stars. Starfire. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. We meant to miss. Uh, she also has two of the biggest lasers in the game. That's 12 mega Kelvin lasers. That's the temperature at which the laser burns. Uh, they're going to do some damage if they hit. Same chance to hit. Okay. And they're, okay, we one did hit. get one hit. Okay. So the f 14, we said the range was 14? Mm -hmm. At 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the fifth range bracket. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, you are going to take two points of damage. Okay. On your port, I'm sorry, on your starboard bow. Okay, and then so, where on the starboard bow? That's what we're about we to roll find it. out. So ah. damage is, is decided by dice, and the location is by dice, so it's completely gotcha. random. And it's on a D6 now? It's on a D6. Well, on a, a, light cru on, on a heavy cruiser, it's on a D6. Yeah. If you look on your ship damage charts, uh, then it's, the, all this is already worked out for you on the charts. Okay, where's it saying? Um, the number's on the side. One so through one six. Through five. It's one through five. Are we on the right ship? That's the coal rain. Oh, that's the war zone. Sorry. Oh, there you go. The coal rain. We're he, he's literally trying to get he's the war zone killed. He's trying to get the war zone killed. There we go. So, so yeah, one through six. Yep. Awesome. But luckily, the shield number is the same, so we yeah. didn't mess anything oh, up. Oh, okay, there. cool. 
All right, so that's going to be six. number six. So two just mark off now two laser boxes. damage is pretty simple. It goes straight down. Okay. So, so two boxes one. and number six. Perfect, just like that. That's okay, it. cool. And you that's can see the bigger the ship, you can take a lot more damage before you start getting core components yeah, and worrying about your ship systems. blowing up. Yep. Okay. All right, Mr. Tsurikawa. Okay, this is my. Um, no, how do we determine who is shooting right now? Uh, all fire is simultaneous. Oh, right. So I'm just going to go through all my fire to kind of, you know, get through this so that we can see how the rules work. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and finish up. Um, okay. None of this damage actually takes effect until the end of the turn. Got it. So now we're looking at four. Um, okay, it looks two like hits. Yeah, two hits with my 60 gigawatt rail guns. This is my light cruiser firing. Two hits, one, two, three, four. These are only one dot each. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be one in number five okay. and one in number two. two. Okay. Scoring the pinch job. Yep. Yes. That's pretty much all I'm doing here. First rounds like that, that's usually what happens. You start Yeah, away. this this first round is going to be kind of a, a one t uh, 15 terrible EPC. That's going to be two dots down. Mm -hmm. And that is starting in number, number one. one. So two yeah, number we're, one. we're splashing damage all over the hull here. Yeah, perhaps there was some particularly fine nose art that offended you. Yes. <laughs> All right, and that's going to be the fifth one. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. Okay, I got one plasma hit that missed, thank goodness. And uh, my five gigawatt rail guns, so my small little five inch guns on my destroyer, are out of range. Okay. What I mean out of range is they basically ra they run out of damage before they get to that range bracket. I see, I see. So that is going to be it for me and uh, gunfire. Okay, so it's on to my shooting as well, Lance? Uh, yep. Okay, so the, the Korean has. Two 10 gigawatt real guns in the bow. Yep. And it also has a 8 MG KV laser beam. Mega Kelvin laser, yep. Yeah, it's got two of those in the front. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I can fire those. I've also got a class 4 torpedo. Class torpedoes. 4 torpedoes. Torpedoes yep. happen after gunfire. Okay. Yep. Uh, so in that case, I'll fire the, the two real guns. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I think I'll just target your biggest one. So from where we are, I'm here. Yep. And I start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. Same range, yeah? yeah. 14. Mm -hmm. So I look to 11 through 15. Base mm -hmm. to hit is 7. Yep. Uh, then it's your shields. My shields on that are a 4. Are a 4. Because so you're going to be um, hitting the starboard bow again. Yep. Becomes 3. Mm -hmm. And then. CIC is plus 1. Oh, he does get a CIC bonus. Yeah. Yes. You plus 1 on. and. Your Very ship much. has the gunnery accuracy, which yeah. means you get plus two to hit. So I'm looking at sixes? Yes. Plus threes. So you and get plus three to hit. How many dice am I rolling here? Uh, one per gun. One, one ten per cider per gun. Okay. So, so we usually try and roll classes together since the damages are yeah. different. So two of those yep. looking at two sixes. Two of your rail guns. Uh, get one. So one, one hit. hit. One miss. And then I'm in one, two, three, four, the fifth range bracket. So that's one, two, three, four, five, three points. Okay, that's going to be three points down in and number uh, six. Number five. Okay. One, two, three. You're almost internal already. Yep. And then I've got my, my two lasers. Same number to hit, yeah? You've got more 10 gigawatt rail You've guns, You've got right? four on the bow. Uh, you got two oh, bow, turns. bow, stern, stern. All right. So I'll roll two more. Don't cheap out on the Iron Duke. Uh, two more both hits. hits. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Location, man. Yep. Uh, five and a four. Ooh, three five point and a five. Four. Internal damage. So one, two, three, and number four. And then you hit sector five again. Yep. Okay, uh, you probably can't see this terribly well under close oh, camera, but he hit in number four right here, and then he hit in number five, now he just hit in number five again. So now you're down into the guts of the ship. You have hit starboard cargo, you've hit the starboard bow mass drivers, you're knocking out anti-aircraft guns, and you've damaged some of the starboard bow weapons. You haven't knocked anything out yet completely, mm -hmm. but you are decompressing internal, yeah, you're actually killing people and now. And you're on the way to the bridge. <laughs> you are on the way to the bridge, that's right. All right, so it's then my, my laser beam. Your lasers, your two lasers. Which I actually have four of. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, these British ships have lots of guns. They, they, like, they like guns. Right. The Iron Dukes more? are heavy. Oh. Sure. Okay. Yep. All right, uh, looking at sixes again then. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Your target number doesn't change for the weapon. Uh, two hits. Two hits, yep. Sixes count on two or below. Two hits because of your crew was just that awesome. Yep. yep. And for the lasers, it goes one, two, three, four, five, just one point. Yep. Okay. For each. Fives would be nice. Uh, uh, four and a four. one. So I get another one internal. Yep. Into one. the four. And that's only one ship. That's my first ship yep. complete. Yep. So I'll pop it out the way. Uh, we'll then go for the Warzan. Now the so. Warzan, she's an older ship. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she has 
six seven gigawatt real guns in the bow. Yes. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she doesn't have the CIC. Yeah, and I'm looking for sevens, minus four, minus fours. plus two yep. is fives. Yep. Fives. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So that's four more shots. Yep. Fives or less. Ooh, oh, Warzan redeems himself. Warzan, you're going to make fun of me while I'm out at the table. Oh, my <laughs> guns are going to hit. That's awesome. So, uh, for them, it's range bracket five. So, yep. one, two, three, four, five. They're each doing one point. Okay. That adds up. We're, we're still kind of far away. Uh, five, four, four, six. Oh. Five, two in number four. Right. That's starboard cargo is not completely gone. It's two in number four. And then and one, one in, in number six. six. Okay, I got it. Nice shooting, Tex. Uh, she's going to bore a hole right through you. That's exactly. True. That's true. Now let's have the dig. The dignity's got to beat Warzan. <laughs> dignity's just got to beat um, Warzan. Are you sure you only have those those four? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. yeah, so just two weapons it's in the, the body, two in the stern. That's okay. what she's got. Cool. Okay, so in the body, I've got two 8 Mega Kelvin lasers. Yep. And a 60 E Hertz. Uh, uh, oh, Cyglex emitter. Okay, so that's basically an, uh, 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 what's, what's the other word for it? Like a grazer. It's a, um, like, like laser is synchronized light. These are either x-rays or gamma rays. Yeah. And uh, the, all the weapons in this game basically have very fancy pseudo-scientific gobbledygook kind of names. Yeah. What they basically do is just different weapons profiles. Dam different the, types the, the of damage, damage. The damage comes in different shapes. Yeah. I just want to interrupt one second. Can yeah. you double check the Indomitable? I thought they had three gun turrets. In the front? You rolled four. Uh, I think she has six. Yeah, six. Sorry. Okay. Six. Yeah. Two more. There, there's, there's two more guns on yeah. there. Right. It didn't sound right. Looking the numbers fires. were... And one, one, more one more hit. So one more point of damage in four. Another in number, number four. four. That's uh, yeah, right there. Okay, well, that's that's one complete thing down. Starboard bow weapons are down. This ship doesn't have any starboard bow mass weapons drivers. except for mass drivers. You have knocked out one complete mass driver, uh, uh, mass driver mount. Put it on it. Yeah. Okay, so that's this this whole component just got filled in. Yeah. A, a, a unit is not completely eliminated until you filled in every box because these ships are designed with redundancies and backups yeah. and so on. It also makes the game a lot simpler. Yeah. Um, so starboard bow weapons are completely filled in. I'm now required to mark off a starboard bow weapons mount. I start off here with my weapons mounts. I don't have anything on the starboard bow, so I go over here to tor to, uh, to my mass drivers. Mass drivers are basically anti-aircraft guns. They shoot down torpedoes and scouts and, and fighters and things. So I'm going to mark off my starboard bow. This is going to make a difference when you launch torpedoes. Okay. I have less guns to defend myself with. Okay, awesome. Starboard bow, I'm going to mark that off. Okay. And then my grand total number here for mass drivers, it all gets aggregated together for ease of play. I start off with 22. No, you don't. You're now down to the next lowest number, which is 19. Ah, okay. Nice so, uh, the Dignity. I really can just put my feet up. You're doing better than me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Dignity actually has a CIC of plus one. Mm -hmm. So it starts yep. on a seven, down by four, up by three. I'm on sixes again yep. for the first Sixes's two again. shots. Now check the number of guns per, because that does number change shit. is two on the bow. And then I've got one of the 60 E Hertz Okay. Things. okay. Yeah. And then I've got uh, more torpedoes on there, but that's yeah. there. Yep. Cool. So, looking at sixes. Okay. Yes, sixes. Same target. Uh, one hit. One hit, one miss. One hit. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. One point. All right. Nope. Oh, if I don't drop dice, it'll be great. Four. Right, what, what's with number four? You guys are dead on I don't know, but you're one box away from hitting the magazine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's Is that a bad thing? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. For him, yes, because we'll get into it. But when you hit those red boxes, they're red for a reason. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then your cyclics. Yeah, my cyclics, I only get the one. Yep. Looking for a six. Oh, it hits. Ooh, good. Hits. Okay. So this thing does a lot of damage up close. Yes. So one, two, three, four, five. It's doing two points. Okay. Go on, give me a number four just for a laugh. Five. five. Okay, so number up. five. Now, the so Cyglix is a hit or whatever, or the, the laser kind of, well, you hit the bridge. Um, it's not destroyed. Yeah. No, you didn't hit the but bridge. But you're making the captain nervous. You actually drill into the ship, and then it kind of scores down, so it does horizontal damage. So it punches into the ship, and as the ship moves, it kind of blow torches a horizontal line okay. down the ship. This can actually become a big deal later when you get closer, mm -hmm. and you have your big punchy weapons. Yeah. 
that like lasers and mesh drivers that do damage vertically, yeah. and then you have your horizontal damage, like your basically flamethrowers, plasma projectors, yeah. and these cyclic emitters. You want to fire those plasma projectors and cyclic emitters first yeah. to kind of boil down the armor, and then when it gets nice and shallow, then you punch into his reactors and gun mounts mm. with those 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 deep penetrating weapons. Gotcha. So for now, it's a cyclic emitter. It starts on number five, and then it goes aft because it, it's, as, it's as the ship gets dragged down. Yeah. So that's number five, and then there's one in number six. Okay. Oh, we didn't quite make it into the so bridge. We're, we're that's okay. We're, I, we're I, knocking on the bridge. I like the way that works, though, that it's not just punching further in. You're actually going at an angle coming out, depending on how much yeah. armor. Yeah. All, all the through. different ship, all the different. There's like like maybe seven or eight different classes of weapons: torpedoes, railguns, lasers. Uh, plasma projectors, et cetera, et cetera. And they all have a slightly different shape mm -hmm. to how the damage actually gets applied. So tactics, strategy does come into play. I'm going to fire these first, like he said, shear yeah. off that armor, and I'm going to use those lasers to try and snipe stuff on yeah. the inside. So that's all primary weapons yep. done. Okay, all gun arrays done. We uh, cook off torpedoes. Okay. Now this is where you have the distinct advantage over the Japanese. Well, sort so of. So if you look at your ships. Yeah. He has a lot more torpedoes. My torpedoes are ship breakers. They yeah. probably won't hit because I don't have too many of them, but they are super accurate. Yeah. And God save them if I actually land a hit. So I've got six, six in the bow, on the bow which on is the, the one you can fire. Yep, on the coal rain. And I've got two more in the dignity. So. Ah, no, actually, there's something I forgot to check. Because my stuff was in different locations on the board, I should have been counting. Oh, that's um, true. Different range. That's one, true, two, three, but... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So right, because but, it's still within the exact same bracket. It didn't so, change okay. anything. Again, a lot of this game has been designed, this game's been getting kicked around for six years. We've been making changes and updates. One of the big things we've tried to do is enhance playability. Obviously, there's a lot of detail in this game. It's had six years of play testing in. It's pretty robust, and we're now down to the point where it's how do we make the game run smoother and faster mm. so that when things like that do happen, it's not a worry. Yeah. Well, if you think, before actually hitting record, James, you very quickly explained to me a couple of the key concepts. Yep. And already I'm just running away with it. I mean, I thought I was going to be turning to Jen every no. turn going, what are my tactical options? What do? What do? Oh, He's God, I'm this. on fire. This next initiative and movement phase is really what's going to really make a big difference. It is. If you difference. can bring that broadside to bear, ooh, yeah. it's going to be pretty. These ships, the basic tactics are, okay, the ships usually ap uh, approach each other head on, obviously. Yeah. So there's nothing terribly vital up front. The ship designers know that in the, in the orbital shipyards, there's nothing, ter like, there's weapons up front, but that's about it. The reactors, the engines, mm -hmm. the, sh the troop bays, the, you know, all that stuff's in the back. The key thing in this game, and again, it's also trying to be like old 20th century, 19th century naval combat in space, space battleship Yamato done a little bit more seriously, yeah. is to get a broadside across the enemy's stern. Okay. That's the main... So you want to rake them. If you can rake the enemy's stern, you're going to start seeing some fireworks. <laughs> but at the same time, we didn't want shooting the front of the ship to be pointless. Yeah. You know, otherwise, why even bother firing when you're this close? Well... So that's why up front we've got the bridge and the magazine. So yeah. you can still do damage. Yeah, well, I mean, looking at what's happened here, it, it feels as if you fired a warning shot. My guys have went, what the hell? How about no? <laughs> I just drilled everything into the biggest target. Well, it was on camera, folks. You saw that first four dice on my four biggest guns I have in my entire task force. And you yeah. just went, we thought, oh, that's a pretty lights over there. No, <laughs> the ships are that way, dude. You're supposed to shoot at the ships. <laughs> okay, so yeah. torpedoes then. The other torpedoes. Now here, yeah. you've got port bow and starboard bow. So all your yeah. torpedoes are in the front. Yeah. So you've got a total of four. So we just lay those. Oops, and yeah. I just destroyed your... The coal ran, no. Yeah, that's okay. Shipyard repaired her fast. <laughs> okay. So these actually start off in the same hex as the firing ship. Ah, I see. Uh, well, let me just launched. double check with hers, because hers are, yeah, just straight in the bow. I'm getting six. Oop, and I'm doing port bow, starboard bow for the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so these arcs are set up in such a way where they, they, they tend to overlap in the obvious areas. Yeah. So, yeah, you can definitely fire all your torpedoes. As long as you have some kind of target. Um, and then what you do is you just put a slash. When they explode, you put an X. That means you can launch more. Okay. Now, you only fired off half of her torpedoes, yes. right? she's okay, got 12. Yeah. I only fired the six. Also, yeah. where, the sh where the torpedoes are located on the ship makes a big difference. And this is where, if you want to, the spreadsheets, the a lot of Excel spreadsheets in the game, allow you to get down into the nitty-gritty and design your own ship. Yeah. Where you put your torpedo base might be important. Are you a guy that likes to launch torpedoes as you're coming in? Or do you want to add it to your broadside and, you know, all kinds yeah. of stuff? Do you want to have some weapons on the back just to cover your escape in case you really have to get out of there in a hurry? There's a lot of strategy in this game. I'm quite liking this. Yeah. So, 
uh, I'm launching everything mm -hmm. because Alrighty. why the hell not? Right. Oh, this this just this yeah this just this just turned into a fight. So now it's on. <laughs> now this uh, my heavier ship has no torpedoes. Okay. It has ungodly guns. I know we haven't seen it yet because so far my Japanese gunners have been hitting the sake a little bit and <laughs> we can't hit anything so far. But trust me, once I do start hitting with it, you're going to see some. You're going to feel it. Yeah. Once he it. closes in, the trade-off is all these ships have designs that are that are uh, balanced with power versus weight versus crew capacity like and everything else. Yeah. Uh, I.e., I don't have any torpedoes. Mm. So, um, Jen, do you have my? Oh no! Right. Uh, do me a favor. Yeah, uh, pass me those orange. They're under the corner of your. Ah, uh, these. Yeah. Pass me those orange triangles there. Right. Those are my Japanese torpedoes. Those are. Cool. Now, as Jim was saying, he's got fewer. But if his hit, they hurt. Yeah, they're a better class than yours, yeah. and he has an ECM bonus, an electronic warfare bonus, so yeah. they're more likely to hit as well. Yeah. Right now, my electronic warfare officers are trying to jam your targeting. So yeah. when these torpedoes come in, it's going to be harder for your anti-aircraft guns mm -hmm. to shoot down my torpedoes. Oh, no, no, we no. say that this isn't a historical game. There's a lot of naval history into this. Anyone who knows like World War II naval history knows that Japanese long lance torpedoes were ridiculously long range, ridiculously fast, and incredibly powerful. They would break an American light cruiser in half right. with one hit. That's kind of modeled in this game. Okay, so launching then. That's it, and we're, we're done, done with that, and there's no fighters on the table, and there's nothing uh, heavy with resolution. The only resolution that we had was that uh, that mass driver hit on my starboard valve, which we've already yep. taken, care, taken of. care of. Yep. And so we are done with turn one. Turn awesome. Turn. Uh, I have to say, for pickup and play factor, I, I instantly feel like I'm in and on the level of you. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like I have plans beginning to form in my mind of where I want to go, what I want to do. <laughs> what we wanted was a very uh, like high seas kind of a, of a naval game. We did deliberately wrote it in to where there was a limited amount of fashion light uh, travel. I mean, you can't cross the galaxy in a day or anything like that. It still takes weeks to get to like the nearest star system or whatever instead of years or hundreds of years. And there is no faster than light communication. Gotcha. There's no quantum entanglement or anything you know funky like that. And the reason is your Navy gives you an envelope with your orders as the captain. Mm -hmm. And we have ship commanders and, 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 and career paths and we get into all that later. But then they send you out there to this star system and they say, we'll see you in two years. Come yeah. back with, you know, oh wait, here's the flag. <laughs> put, your, put this flag on that planet and you're on your own. Yeah. We're going for that Caribbean, you know, 1600s, almost age of piracy feel where mm -hmm. they send you out there and you're on your own. There's no, you know, calling on the, calling headquarters on the on the cell phone and asking for orders. So is it like that moment in Passengers where he sends an emergency call back to Earth and it won't get it until like eight years before he lands on planet? Yo, yeah, you're on your own. Yeah, absolutely. You head out here and you're, 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 not, you're not stuck, but you're given a lot of, lee as a captain or a commodore or an admiral, you're given a lot of leeway. Gotcha. All right, so. Beginning round two, then. We are and beginning it's the same round again. two. Mm -hmm. Exact same. So we roll for initiative for each ship. Yep. Doesn't matter who rolls. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. We you roll. can roll at the same time. Yep, so I'll roll for the Korean. Uh, so that's Ooh, one. Oh, that's not that's good. That's not a good roll. No, that's four plus one, yeah. And then you have your tactics bonus of plus two. Yeah, so that's seven. Seven. Okay, the Nagato, uh, just save time, I've ro I rolled very quickly. The Nagato has rolled a uh, two. More than six. Warzan, Warzan redeems himself from Which his last initiative. Six. So six plus five. The Sendai has rolled two. a three. Thirteen. Right. On top of the five gives and an eight. And then the Dignity. The Dignity. For a two. Two. Well, that's slow today. It becomes ten. He was distracted by how well the Warzan did. <laughs> Okay, the uh, Japanese have rolled two, three, and six respectively, so I wind up with a six, eight, and eleven for my movement. Mm -hmm. My heavy, light uh, cruiser and destroyer. So I'm on a seven, ten, and thirteen. So that works out, no ties. Yeah. <sighs> and you still got something going first. And I still have to go first. Yes, you do. Oh, so even that seven didn't have to go first. Thank you, Tactics Bonus. That Tactics Bonus, again, that's the second time that you're, you're just the experience of your officer crew has really helped out. Yeah. And that's hold, one of the hold things. Hold steady, man. My friend. Right. That's one of the things that I really liked that Jim designed into the game. Mm. A war game's one thing, but I tend to be more of a role-playing character. Mm. Okay, yeah, let's play and blow stuff up, but I like building things up. Mm -hmm. So you can shop. You can go, okay, I won this, I've won this many games. What if I gonna train my crew in? Yeah. Am I gonna train them to be a better shot? Am I gonna train them to be better in engineers? I'm gonna yeah. train and you can really start gearing your ships towards certain things. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Okay, so the um 
The uh, heavy cruiser You're losing up on me here. Yeah, what's, they, that? They, they, what's, what's this? What the heavy that? cruiser Nagato had an initial thrust of last turn yeah. of um, eight, so she only has a thrust of four. Mm -hmm. So what she did was uh, actually she has a thrust of excuse me about that. I forgot she had the thrust bonus. She has a thrust of five effectively. Mm -hmm. So what she was able to do was reduce her thrust mm -hmm. by one, make a facing change, and then uh, again decelerate by one more. So basically, she wound up moving one, two, three, four, five, six, and then decelerated a grand total of three. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, for five th uh, movement thrust, finally, and her uh, ending velocity is a ending velocity is a five. Excuse me, her ending velocity is a five. Okay. So she decelerated by two, from eight to six, mm -hmm. made a facing change because if you look on that little mini chart on the side there, and yeah. all these ship all these ship sheets have this chart on here, so you're not flipping through books or throwing cards all over the table, um, or counting counters, because I know how you guys hate counters. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, now her velocity was a six. She made her turn, and then when she got to where she wanted to go, she dumped her last thrust point in some last minute deceleration to decelerate one further point to a five. Mm -hmm. So that's where she's at at the moment. So next has to go the HMS core in. Yes. Yep. Okay, so from where she is, she's currently got a thrust of six. Now here's how you want, here's where you probably want to help him out, Jen, because here's where it gets important. Now there's two things you have to decide. Uh -huh. If you want to gear yourself up to keep hitting where you damaged before, yeah. you're shooting for the front of the ship. Yeah. Now, the good the point is that, specifically. starboard bow. The good point about that is you've already done damage. You've already internal, you're almost at the bridge. Yeah. The negative thing with that is, is that's that very narrow window you have to hit to do yeah. that damage. If you gear yourself to where you're shooting towards one of these back quarters, mm -hmm. oh. you've got engines and reactors. Yeah, you've got more stuff you can damage, mm -hmm. but you're starting back at zero because yeah. there's no damage on those hulls yet. Mm. So it's just up to you of where you want to focus it. Do you want to risk a smaller target, mm. but you're already internal? Yeah. Or do you want to go for the easier target that all of the ships can hit, mm -hmm. but you got to start back at zero and work your way through the armor again? Um, I'm actually going to do a little bit of both. Okay. Because I have a thought here. So my starboard side, you've already started chewing into it a little bit. We're I now, mean, we are now closer. A little, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're now closer, so I think what I want to do is, so my turn is going to cost me two points of thrust per turn. So what I want to do is I want to turn for one. Mm -hmm. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, and decelerate by two. Okay, that's an option. But just so you know, you're now shooting yep. the wow. undamaged side. But super close. Super close, so but the undamaged it. bow is okay what you're still that. shooting. I'm okay with that. I, can I make a suggestion? Because yeah. one thing you don't know about, uh -huh. you can spend one point of thrust, and we're in space, you can flip your ship over. Oh. So you can go on his damaged side, but flip your ship mm. so your undamaged side is facing him. Well, let's see. Hang on, let me go back here. If that's see okay. if that's oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, so you'd go do, up and do then Do you know what this reminds me of, folks, one, super fast? Two, this reminds me of you're playing one of these sci-fi... Uh, four. Then two to turn. Right. And then go one, two, and I'll flip my ship. Yes. For a point, and then that leaves Or one you could go, if you want to go closer, you could go one row closer, go up two and over. There's well, a lot I of think, variety. I think I'm okay. The only difference is that here you're not broadsided. One, two, three, four. What was it? Your, your velocity is six? Yeah. yeah. Here with a velocity yep. of six. One, two, three, four, five. You're not really uh, broadsided there either. Yeah, but I'm, I'm okay with where I'm at now if I can flip my ship. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And how do we denote that? Uh, uh, a little that, counter. There's those little counters that little you might be able to reach. Yes. Yep. Uh, Many a time a ship has been shaved by, saved by reserving one thrust point yeah. to flip over. And I still have a, a point of thrust left over then because it cost me two to turn, one to flip, yep. and then I can slow down by one. To Do go you, five. If he moves one forward, will he be broadsided? Yes. If you move one forward, you can shoot every gun you have. But I was on a velocity of six, I thought, does that not mean that's my max move, or can I move beyond that? No, there is no there is no maximum velocity in this game. The maximum velocity of the game is not even the speed of light. I mean, it just depends on how fast you want to be going, mm -hmm. and it's harder to turn at higher speeds, and it's harder okay. to slow down at higher speeds. Your thrust points determine what you can do, okay. not necessarily your velocity. I so see. if you want to speed up one to seven at the end of your round, yeah. 
to edge up. You just have to change your ending number to seven. You move forward one more. Okay, oh. so real quick, and, and we're, we're, we're going through this particular movement phase with a lot of care, and we're doing it like four and five times because it yeah. really is important. This could be the game already. Yeah. So here's where we started, and he had a velocity from last turn six. of six. Okay, so he puts one point into acceleration. Now, if you look on that little movement chart, yeah, going seven is the exact same it's cost still the, to turn. Exactly. There you go. It's still the same turn cost to turn. So one, two, three, uh -huh. up one. Four, five, six, seven. I'll take that. So I'm No guts, up. no glory. And uh -huh. okay, you've you made one turn, that cost you two. Uh -huh. You made uh, one acceleration, that cost you three. And you had what you're going to spend one to roll over. That's the rollover counter right yep. there. So now your ship's inverted. Yeah. So as you're coming, okay, and our damage sides are facing each other, at the last minute, your ship did. Yeah. Now all your port side guns are pointing toward me. Gotcha. All right. That's cool. And now we have two massive heavy cruisers doing exactly what we said down. doesn't happen right one, yeah. next to each yeah. other. <laughs> why, why am I reminded of like that little female holographic AI that pops up next to the captain in some of these verses? <laughs> How can I help you, Captain? I say you go blow the head out of okay, him. Right so that Excellent, seven. Captain. Seven, uh, um, eight. It my is on now. Yes. Yeah, I have an eight, so my eight has to go. That is my medium cruiser, my light cruiser, uh, IGN Sendai, a, Ho a Hokkaido class. Mm -hmm. Now Jim can choose to group his guys up, or he can choose to try and send them around your other yeah, side. Yeah, get in on that damage yep. side. This is why closing quick may not always be the smartest move, Yeah, but it's it always this the way. most fun. Put it to you this way, folks. Lance asked for a short video. So <laughs> we're we're going to have this, one, we're gonna have this one wrap up pretty fast. But I also right. like how quickly the game can get exciting. The second yeah. you realize... Oh wait, if I turn this way, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I like the fact that there's no hard line on your movement. You no. can just increase your velocity to get more mm -hmm. in there. You Our friend at home, away. Alex, that's a ras on the website. Big shout out to my friend Alex. He's he's been he's been helping us play test Absolutely. this game almost the entire time. He he has a all Prussian fleet. Mm -hmm. So his ships, he sits down, he actually gets into the DXL and designs his own ship, his his own ships. Yeah. Engines and guns. Yeah. He'll come on at 20 with a, with a heavy cruiser that has 12 gigawatt rail guns all over the place. It's a pocket battleship at this point, mm -hmm. and he'll be coming on at almost uh, just absurd speeds. Yeah, be careful. The next time you're over, you might be facing a you know a Northern Irish Special Task Force. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's, he, uh, We're up for it. We, we, we make fun of him because he's like, uh, I, I, I have more craters named after me on the sides of asteroids and planets than any other admiral in the Navy right now. <laughs> All right, so this heavy, this light cruiser started off with a velocity of eight. Uh, yeah, there. Okay. Yep. Now he has uh, five thrust points because he's a light cruiser. He goes a little bit faster. Yeah. So, all righty, I can make two facing. I can make two. I can make two facing. Uh, two. I can. I can make two facing changes at that speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he basically does an S turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Broadside on your tail. Yeah. Now this is dangerous, but not as bad as it thinks because his firepower is now split. Yeah. This ship has to shoot at one side, the other ship shooting at the other side. Yeah. So while it is two ships, mm -hmm. they're not shooting the same place at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you're not taking. He's splitting his firepower. Damage point. Yeah. Like, I, would, I, I would much rather have this heavy cruiser with a light cruiser as. Yeah. Let's just say that. <laughs> All right. So we'll go for my ten next, then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Because my next is an eleven. All right, so I've got a velocity of 10. That's the HMS Dignity, so that's the little one here. The turn is going to cost me three, and I have six thrusts, so I can actually do a two-turn as well. Here we go. So I am going to go one, Destroyers two, are quick. Three, four, five. Oh, no, you, you don't have to spend a point to turn. You You spend your thrust to turn. Yeah. One, two, oh. three, four. You, you did that. Don't do that. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight was your turn? No, uh, eight, ten. Thrust ten, but I'm going to stop there. So you're going to slow down two to an eight. Yes. Yeah. The only thing is both of those turns cost you. Oh, no. All those, both of those cost. Three and I have thrust six. Both of those, also the, both of those turns cost you. Uh, no, you're going to want to slow no, down first because then you right wouldn't here. be able to slow down. I, okay. Ju just, oh, to yeah. explain, just to explain the rules real quick. All right. So he had a, he had a thrust. Of t I'm sorry. A velocity of 10. Okay. Okay. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He overshoots. So he doesn't uh. want to do that. So going back to where he starts, he tells engineering all engines full reverse. Yeah, slow one, down two, by yeah, two. Slow down by two. That costs you two points. Yeah. 
Yeah, now and you're my only turns are eight. costing two. Now your yeah. turns only cost two because you're yeah. moving at eight, not at ten. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yeah. now you're broadsiding his fantail. Yeah. Oh, this is just going to be a staircase. All those times your algebra <laughs> teacher told you one day algebra's going to, math is going to save your life. This, this is the is time. This is so many people don't get that aren't hobbyists. One thing that any game like this does, it will sharpen your mathematics skills like Absolutely. nothing else. Absolutely. Right. Geometry. Okay. My next is a 13. Oh, 13. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. war's wow. end woke up. The, war, the war's end's feeling alert. I think he got himself a can of boost. Yeah, I was going to say, he yeah. had his energy drink. Yeah, directly re injected into the reactor. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to lose another game. No. <laughs> he called yeah. on the engineer. He was like, engineer, pour more relentless into the reactors. Not that <laughs> sugar-free shit. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty, so my destroyer has a current velocity of eight, same basic thing. Yeah. I'm gonna duplicate the same move that my light cruiser made to kind of make sure that if I lose my my heavy cruiser, which looks like it might happen, we're um, gonna lose ours you're too. You're gonna lose your heavy cruiser too. All right. At least that's the plan. All right. So. So his new velocity is now also an eight. So the war zone has a velocity of eight, which means turns are costing two, so I can get two turns here. So if I go, one, two. Perfect. I'd put him in the same hex. Oh, there we go. Oh, that, if you'll look, we're perfectly, we're doing the same thing. Yeah. Light and destroyer, light and destroyer, heavy and heavy. Yeah. This the, got ugly quick. This, your, this your is going to get light messy. and destroyer are both going into mine, but both of mine are going into yours. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping to see some fireworks here. Oh, oh, have no doubt on that account. <laughs> yes, yes, have no fear on that score. <laughs> Stuff's going to go boom. <laughs> So now we're into shooting? Yeah. Um, oh, are we into shooting? We're um, not into shooting. We now, torpedoes. We went to torpedo movement. Ah, I see. Those torpedoes we cooked off. We're so close, our torpedoes are pretty much going to get free movement. If you can do me a favor and pass me one of those sheets underneath your ship sheets. There you go, sir. These are all the basic charts of the game. These are on the project uh, thread. If not, just email me, James, at, uh, or send me a PM. Okay, so um, each class of torpedo, there's, f there's four classes of torpedo, really, class two, three, four, and five. Technically, there's a class one, but nobody uses them. Yeah. Class one is basically, you know, throw rocks out in space. Um, we'll probably lose class one in a later rewrite of the game. But basically, the Japanese have class five. The British, the Royal Navy has class four, so they're yeah. almost as good. Uh, class five torpedoes, that's just one of the Japanese uh, fortes. They just love really big torpedoes. Mm. Um, but th th their speeds are so fast, and we've, we decide just to close so quickly that uh, really doesn't come there, to there's play. not going to be any... And when you're moving torpedoes, there's no thrust. There's no they, they move like more standard sh uh, units in war, war games. Yeah. You put them where you want them to they, go. They have a movement rate. You count the many hexes, and there they go. So what's our movement rate? Oh, well, you're well within. It's 18 for a class four, and it's 20 for okay. a class five. Awesome. And you point them at the hex side. You want to do the damage. Yeah. And the only thing you keep in mind, the only thing that shoots these out of the sky is that mass driver number. Yeah. So in this instance, it doesn't really come into play because all the ships are closer together. Yeah. But this is one of the reasons why you keep them closer together so they can support each other because yeah. the mass drivers have a limited range. Yeah. So if I put these in here on that mm -hmm. edge. Yep, you're aiming for that damage. Yep. Yep. And I'll put these two right in the front here. Um, do you, do you want, do you want, does, the, does he want to focus his torpedoes? I want to spread the damage just a little bit. I think that might be enough to do something really nasty, and then I'm happy to let the other ones fly elsewhere. My only concern with that yeah. is these mass drivers knock these out of the sky. He has an electronic bonus, mm -hmm. which is good at shooting things but down. I already took one of his out. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to risk it for a bit. Okay. I would recommend, mm -hmm. if you do want to spread the damage out, yeah. I would keep those torpedo damage where you're going to be doing gun damage, ah, so you can overlap so, damage. Yep. So, so I would have it, like yep, they're gonna, you can say they're coming in the back end. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. That, 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 this, that's this like that's not what I meant. That, <laughs> that didn't come out right. Yeah, this, this just looks like a lot of fun. Yes. This is, this is going to get nasty in a hurry. Yeah. Most Dark Star games don't shake out like this. People have fighters. They have planetary assault transports. They're trying to get down on yeah. the planet. You want to spread your ship out. This just turned into a ballroom punch up, and uh, well, we are in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. This is a pub brawl. You, you can say, well, space pub brawl. Space pub brawl. Or brawl. if you want to do it right, it's a pub brawl in space. <laughs> 
Okay. General quarters, general quarters, all hands to action stations, set condition one throughout the ship. This is the captain. This is not an exercise. All right. Do you want to do the good news first or do you want to get the bad news first? Well, the first thing we do is torpedoes versus mass drivers. Yeah, yeah. true. So, okay. Um, we'll do your torpedoes against my mass drivers first, just so okay. we can get through the system first. So I've got six. Mass drivers used to be on a gun-by-gun -gun basis, the same as all other weapons go. That just turned into way too tedious of a problem, so we've kind of boiled it down onto a nice big chart so we can do it all at once. So, IJN Nagato, that's my big heavy cruiser here, yeah. okay, has an adjusted mass driver rating of 19. I did have, 19, I did have 22 a few minutes ago, but yeah. Justin took care of that for me. So now I have 19. And I roll a d6, and I basically just cross-reference on this chart here, and mm -hmm. I see how many I knock down. Go ahead. I want to roll as good as I can. Mm -hmm. I do have a plus two CIC, mm -hmm. and I do have the ECM bonus, so I get a plus one for that as well. Yeah. So I roll a d6, I add three. That's two for my plus two CIC, as one more for my uh, for my electronic warfare bonus. Mm -hmm. So what guns I have left are going to be really accurate, especially if I roll well on this chart. I roll a six. I don't Ooh. think you have any more torpedoes. I don't think the torpedoes are So true. 19 with an adjusted nine. I shot down 11 torpedoes. There's I only six, six there. there. Yep. Those I'm torpedoes kind of glad didn't. I didn't throw the other two in there. They would have all been gone. That's, That's true. true. That's true. That's true. Absolutely. You need a, a good roll there. So I'll move these out of the way. All righty. These and torpedoes. Uh, cross through this. Yep, because that. that means next round you can launch that bay again. Yeah. Except this time, if she's still here, yeah. now she launches 12. Uh, yeah, because then it's front and rear. Front and rear, because yeah. we're broadsided. Yeah. Which is an oddity. Most ships have torpedoes in port and starboard valley launch as they're coming in. That Iron Duke was spe specifically designed as a broadside gun battle mm -hmm. ship, so she's uh, everything's she's on the British. broadside. She's so cool. because we're broadside, I get by and stern. Yes. Ooh la la. Ooh yeah. la la. Yeah, when she fires this round, that's what I said. We're gonna feel it. There's going to be pretty light. The way this, the way the fleets are set up on the table right now, every single ship is going to fire every single gun on, on every everything. Every single ship. <laughs> yeah. This is this. <laughs> Lance, this you game. asked for a short game. Here we, we're we are it. accommodating you. Okay, and now for my other two ships, um, IJ and Sendai. I said I don't think any of the torpedoes are getting through. I have twenty. I have no bonuses. I do have my ECM bonus, so I get a plus one. So three becomes a four on twenty. I cross reference on my chart. That's four torpedoes gone. That's all Those are all and done. the destroyer never even had to fire. All right. That's uh, probably going to be the same thing with mine. So I will roll for the cool range. She has a plus one. She has a cool range. She has a thirty. Hold on, there's a lot of modifiers here. Thirty-one 30. plus one. Yep. She has a thirty, so she gets to roll thirty on this chart right here. Yeah. So she rolls on this row, the one that says uh, that's that's you know, twenty-eight to thirty. Mm -hmm. That's how many torpedoes she shoots down on that roll. Uh -huh. However, she gets a plus one on that roll. Uh, she has however, a plus one she has a well. That's what the plus one is. I got you. Okay, and then however, I have the electronic warfare bonus. Mm -hmm. We are, I should say, uh, yeah, electronic warfare bonus. We are jamming some of your sensors a little bit, okay. so it's a negative one. So okay. it comes out in a wash. It's a wash. It's a, a so flat thirty. Yeah, well, you uh, roll thirty determines what your column. Yeah. Yeah. Roll a d six. Okay. You want to roll as high as you can. For four. four. That's probably enough. Four on thirty is ten torpedoes. There's only there's six only there. four there. Yeah. Cool. Six there. Torpedoes don't hit often. They don't, as you can see. The mass drivers, especially if you're smart and you keep your ships grouped together, yeah. they don't hit often. I However, see. when they do, they make a big hole. Gotcha. We also had a little bit of a uh, issue with the, when the, the way the ships were originally um, uh, approaching. Not all the ships could fire all their torpedoes. The ships don't usually close this fast, mm -hmm. so there's not this much mass driver fire. And there are factions out there that carry a lot more torpedoes than this. The Chinese, mm -hmm. you fight the Pan Asian, uh, the Pan Asian 30, Union. 40 in this torpedoes game. around. They launch 40 or 50 torpedoes a turn. I'll buy that. They, <laughs> for a dollar. They're not, they're not terribly accurate, but uh, throw enough rocks in this space and something's, something's going to hit. All right, now for the part that I am eagerly waiting to see. All right, let, let's let's do my bad news first. Let's do the bad news first. All right. I, I think this could be hilarious. Yes, this is going to be get ready with the yeah. marker. And I, I do like having the three ships in front of me with those grids. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we used to, I don't know why we didn't think of it until so recently, it used to be on the ship with pencil and we had to erase. Yeah. All you have to do is slide it in a sheet protector with a dry yeah. erase marker. Then you only ever need to print out one ship. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, cl clean up as a snap. We used to have what we called eraser parties after the battle. <laughs> you sit there for 20 minutes and erasing all these sheets. After so, three battles, also, there's holes in all your paperwork. You make a mistake, oh, that's okay. Change, yeah. done. Well, you know, I did it a couple of times here yep. with speeds and Easy. velocities. All right. 
My broadside of three triple turrets, two in the front, one in the back, two forward, one aft, of 18 terrible EPCs. So I have a grand total of six guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, these are really ridiculously powerful weapons. Uh, and I finally get to shoot them all. And hopefully I'll roll a little bit better. I am at point blank range. Point blank range. The base to hit on a D10 is 11. 11. <laughs> it's going to hit. I get uh, plus two for my CIC. My base to hit is now a 13. Minus your front shield. Are which you is shooting four. at his front or his stern? Because we're evenly broadsided. Uh, we are broadsided. However, we are both slightly forward of each other. Uh -huh. So can you zoom in on the other camera oh, super I fast? Oh, I see. Yeah. So we're slightly yeah. forward. Yeah. So we cannot target each other's engines. Yeah. All right, he's a little bit f too far back to hit my engines. I'm a little bit too far back to hit his engines. Mm -hmm. The way he was before, when we were directly perpendicular to each other, you can aim at each other's engines. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's okay, when the two ships are shooting at each other, ah, which hex nice. side yeah. is the fire coming in through to hit your, yeah, to hit your so counter? We're, we're like that currently. Yeah, that's actually a little bit more accurate there. Yeah. So, yeah, we're hitting each other's... Um, I would say uh, starboard bow, but I forgot you're also inverted. I'm actually hitting your port bow. Yeah. Which is good news for you because that's fresh. Yeah, this is why I did that. Yeah, my port bow, my starboard bow is not so fresh. You just got to get lucky with like two or three hits. and. Well, can I burn like right through to the other side of the ship? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. we've, we've hawk dog ships from the front. I've had a ship that was hit so hard from the front, he damaged the reactors in the back. <laughs> the, the ship was turned into a taco. It, it does happen sometimes. Right. Okay, so I got a grand total of six. My we my final target to number to hit was thirteen minus your shields of so four. So nine, basically nine nines. on D ten. It's yeah, yeah all weapons fire as they bear. Yeah. They're, roll they're, tens, roll tens, roll tens. Roll missing here. Oh, re -roll. All right, toss that last one out, and I'll roll one more time. All okay, hit. all hit. They all hit. They all do five. Ooh. So this is going to be basically EPCs. thirty boxes of damage. Weapons grid to full power. Stand by, enemy suppression barrage. Here it comes. There you go, Squire. Figure out where each one's going. All right. So uh, there's a grand total of five hits. No, I'm sorry. Uh, six hits. Let me get one yep. base. Now these are the laser guns, right? These are EPCs. So they do three down and then two in the next column. Okay, that's right. So she'll help you out with that in just a second. Yep. All right. So. So we'll start from the front? Yeah, we'll start from the front. That's a great idea. Number so one. One. Yep. Three deep. Many? Three deep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then yeah. back. Two. Actually, oh, no, no. Yeah. or does it go off? It's always outboard. It goes outboard, sorry. Okay, so that first round hit oh. your ship on so far two. forward. And then two here. But it's just off. They, they fly oh, out right. of space. Yeah. I literally like kind of clipped the corner of the ship and yeah. some of the damage kind of sped off. I'll take that. Oh, yeah. Uh, We've had times where some of these weapons actually go in a little bit and yeah. then they explode yeah. and they cavitate and they <laughs> blow off a chunk of armor and that chunk of armor is floating in space for just a second. The next round hits that uh, instead of your real armor. All right, so the next one is... Three, so that goes three deep. That goes three deep, and, and then, then two, number, and two, number two, takes two. Perfect. Yep. We then have and the one and number four. Number four. So, so three deep one, and four. Two, three. And then and it goes to here. Yep. And here. So you're on the port by weapons, uh, MNVR. Um, maneuvering thruster. Your yeah. ship's had a hard time to turn now. And then the five. But we're okay. Five. Yeah. One, one two, two, three. Eight. Port cargo takes two. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, two, and two and six. six. So one, two, three. One, two, then it's one, one two, two, three, three one, one, two. two. So my port mass driver is gone. Yep. So you would. Port by mass well, driver. Well, hold on. We'll, we'll 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 get all that at the um, at the resolution phase. Okay. And the reason is because all fire is simultaneous. Oh uh, yeah. So none of this damage is a, is actually taking effect just yet because yeah. he hasn't fired his weapons yet. Yeah. I, if I knock out all his forward weapons. Yeah. And then it comes to his fire phase, and then you lose track of did I knock them out this turn or last turn? Yeah. So you, the dots are perfect. Sometimes I use the slash. Yeah. And then when it comes to the resolution phase, you either fill it in or you put an X. That's how you know, okay, this damage has now sunk in. It now takes yeah. effect. Cool. It just helps with, the, uh, helps with the records a little bit. Okay. okay. Although uh, I don't do think the ships fire? are going to last. Uh, I don't think these ships are going to last long enough for us to have to worry about it too much. I then have four 12 megakelvin lasers. Okay. Okay. These also almost automatically hit. Yep. All yep. four hit. All, hit. all hit. These are simple. They just go three straight down. Okay. Three in. Got it. Okay, so oh. triple three and a one, one. in number and one. one. Actually, so this is phenomenal for one, you, two, horrible three, for him. 
and then it was all in number three. So it would be basically one, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost out the other side of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me let me let me show what what's happened here. Look at this. This is this this is one of the most fun things we've always loved about this game is actually tracking where the damage. Like, oh no, you hit the brig, you, you hit the you hit the grocery store, you you blew up the water supply. Well, what are I've, we doing? I've, I've lost a hangar, I've lost port uh, cargo, I've lost the port mass drivers. Uh, is that entire dark area? Gen, help out. Is that entire area for mass for drivers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But um, port bow weapons, weapons are is all fine. Still up and running. Oh yeah. yeah. The only thing that's even sort of noticeable I've done so far is I have put two hits into his forward uh, magazine. And yeah. that's when we come to resolution, we'll go over that. Okay. Because yeah. like I said, these red boxes mm -hmm. affect automatic power downs. Okay. There are um, what we call, there's there's three basic kinds of, of blocks in, in, on these records. It's just normal compartments. Mm -hmm. Then there are the ones that are slightly filled in in gray. Those yep. are core. Uh -huh. That's hit so deep that it's actually, okay. So when these ships go into combat, it's not like Star Wars where the guys are like looking out the window pointing and saying shoot there. Yeah. Everybody kind of pulls into the core of the ship and you know everything is now run remotely as far as guns and weapons and mm -hmm. stuff. Even the bridge actually retracts into the ship and these big armored plates close over it. None of this Star Wars stuff where you know the A-Wing can corkscrew dive straight into the bridge and blow up yeah. the Admiral or whatever at the end of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, so there are no windows in the bridge. Yeah. Not in combat. Yeah. When, once the battle starts, when they when they go to when they go to general quarters, that that ship kind of closes up like a turtle. Mm -hmm. You're now into the meaty part of the turtle. Gotcha. So there's um, th the point, the long long winded point of that is once you get into those gray boxes, there becomes an increasing percentile chance that that ship is just going to run, uh -huh. regardless of what you say. Basically, the ship is going to fail a morale test, yeah. and that's either. The ship's AI takes over and says, I am protecting the crew of the ship. It's my prime directive. Or your first officer says, Captain, Chief of the boat, <laughs> summon the master at arms to the con with his sidearm. <laughs> the captain is relieved of duty. <laughs> Something like that happens. And basically, that you don't lose control of the ship. It's not yeah. considered destroyed, but that ship is now compelled to move off the table as fast as it possibly can. Okay. And All then right. the red boxes are critical. The red boxes might cause you to power down, possibly explode. Okay, even if any of them are hit? Oh, no, no, no. no, no. no. It's, it goes he, by number, by ship. We'll, we'll get to it. He's not in any danger yet. But no, those are you're the, fine. Now that we're into the guts of these ships, um, those are the three kinds of de weapons damage that actually uh, has, a, right. has an impact. And is that it for your heavy? That's it for the heavy cruiser. Okay. All right. Will I swing back with my heavy? Sure. All right. All right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those yes. uh, 10 gigawatts. Eight 10 gigawatt rail guns. Yeah. You start in 11. Plus one yeah. for your CIC, plus two for your gunnery is plus three. Yeah. So you start at a 14. Minus. Your shields on your already they're, damaged bow. They're, they're a four. You ten. can't miss. I can't miss. You, you, you even you if don't, I roll a 10, you even can't if you roll if, a 10. If you roll a 10, it's possible. If you roll a 10, you confirm a miss with a D6, but okay. that probably won't even happen. Well, let's just play it straight and. Nope, they no, all we're good. Down. So you hit with all. Yeah, each one is doing five damage. Abandoned yeah. ship, abandoned ship. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Yeah, 40 points of damage. Yeah, across yeah. eight of these. So let's roll for our location. Yeah. Come on, fives and fours, fives and fours, fives and fours. Yeah. You need fives, Ooh. fours, and sixes. All right, fives, fours, and sixes. So we're at, let's start with the, with the not so. Yeah, so we've got so three we've on got the one. Okay, three on the one. These are uh, rail guns, Jim? Yep, these are piece. rail guns. Five point rail guns. Okay, so five rail point guns. One, this is good because these weapons actually kind of cavitate a little bit. So the first one hits there in number one and it does five. One, two, three, and the other two splash off. Mm -hmm. Another one in number one. These are too far forward. Yeah. One, two, three, splash off. One, two, three, and, you know, splash yeah. off. Okay, that was, you hit hard, but you just hit a little too far forward. You're basically blowing off the headlight of the ship over yeah, and over yeah. again. Uh, then two. two. One in number two. One, two, three, and then they cavitate into those two areas. Mm -hmm. One in number three. One in number three. One, two, three, and they cavitate into those two. Real wow. guns do damage a little different than EPCs. Okay. Two in number four. Two in number four. One. Two, three, and then it decavitates four, five, took out the rest of the magazine. Oh. Kaboom. Kaboom. And, and then, then, I'm sorry, there was another one in number four? Yep, there were two in number four. One, two, three, you're now to the port side. You hit the officer's quarters. 
Okay. Port bow weapons are hit. You're hitting from the starboard side, I'd like to re remind everybody. And then one in number six. <laughs> one in number six. One, two, three, and then four, five. Okay. All right. Now roll your four lasers. Uh, yeah. Well, or not. Four lasers. No, no, However no. it goes. Roll. Just in case. Just in case. Uh, I think uh, that's we ten. do have okay. one ten. So on D6, just don't roll a five or a six. Okay. That's Two. a hit. You're good. Okay, and they're doing... Two points each. Two points each. All righty. So roll four hits. Fives and sixes would be good. Uh, that two wasn't there, remember. One, two, six. These are two points. One, two, four, six. Yeah. One, two, and then number, number two. One, two, and then one in number four. And you're all the way out you're to the armor on the other side. You're literally digging into his side armor. And, and then number six. six. And then number six. Okay. Wow. Uh, you didn't hit the bridge, but you did hit the magazine. Still be in. She's still in. Mm -hmm. She is yeah. hurting like a sun bitch, but she's still in. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where you get to make a tactical decision. Uh -huh. Notice everybody. Okay, this is the ship that he's trying to hit. Uh -huh. He's kicked the living hell out of its starboard bow. That's this area of the ship up here with all his broadside from this ship. He was originally intending to put his broadside from these two into their engines. Or he could gamble a little and you could put their broadsides into that starboard bow as well. Mm. Or Try one ship, her off. pick or one, one yeah. see if you can finish her off with that one, and then save the other one for the engines. Mm. Because as it is right now, there's, I don't even think with four crits it's no. going down. No. As it is right now, his heavy is still in. I think I'm going to pop both my others into it. Okay. Just finish it. You start with to, one. You don't have to declare that up you front. Can one. You, you can definitely do one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that goes. Case, I'll start with the, the HMS Dignity, because I think okay. she's got a good chance. Okay. And cool. we'll start with the four, eight mega Kelvin laser beams. And that is another thing in this game. You can say, I'm shooting these guns here and these guns here as long as the arc works. Oh, absolutely. Works. Okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, oh. the way some ships are laid out, you have no choice but to split yeah. your fire sometimes. All right, so these four. Yep. It's going to uh, now your... Uh, one further away. You're one further away, but you're still at you're at one. one. Ten. Oh yeah, no, I'm you're at one. one, two. Yeah, so I'd be at two. Yep. So you're in the next one. Ten. You're a ten. You're to start at ten. With. Ten. So uh, nines now. Nines now. Nines. Well, ten plus one. Oh, yeah, plus one. one same. Plus he gets the gunnery bonus as well. Three. Three. So thirteen, 13. minus four is nine. nine. Minus four is nine. Okay, nine. cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. two, two misses. misses. This, is, this, is, this is almost disappointing. That's what am I saying? I'm actually... <laughs> <laughs> and they're going two and two. Two and two. Two and two. That's uh, two more Leaders. points. They're both there too? Yeah. One bow weapon is gone now. Okay. There, there, right. there, goes, there, goes, there goes half of my the rest APCs. Of guns. Yeah. So I've got two more here, same number, uh, for the uh, Cyglex. Okay. Uh, Those both hit. Both hit. Um, they are doing five points. There we go. Okay. Now this is going to... One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. The second one hit where? Uh, In the five. five. Number five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Did we take the bridge? Bridge is out. We took the bridge! You decapitated that ship. The Dignity sniped the bridge. Burn Good job! The Dignity just took out my Commodore and took out the flagship of my of my, of my task force. Yeah. But see, All now right, this folks, way... There it is. You haven't committed your light cruiser yet. Yeah, the, the so Warzan the, the can bridge still is take right here. from behind. The Warzan can still take whoever he wants from behind. Oh no, <laughs> I couldn't we resist. went there. Can we go back to close camp <laughs> for just a second? Okay, <laughs> moving swiftly forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are the bridge. That's those four boxes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, different different ship classes have different sizes of bridge. The heavy cruiser is pretty big. It has four boxes. Yep. And uh, once you knock off all five, or I'm sorry, all boxes within a component, that component is no longer functional. Yep. It's even if you didn't take out the bridge, this ship would probably have to withdraw because you've hit so many core boxes. Yeah. You've also taken out two of her major weapons turrets. This ship has pretty much been shorn off at the front as it is. Mm -hmm. She's practically falling in half. And then that last, uh, that last um, gamma ray laser went straight through, the, uh, straight through the bridge, decompressed the bridge. Probably, if I was actually had this guy as a commander, like a, like a 
character that you try to build up over a career. Yeah. I now have to make all kinds of survival checks. He may be badly wounded. He may have to retire. Mm -hmm. He's definitely lost a ship, so that goes on his record. And we actually track all this stuff. And um, yeah, he's he's not off to a good start. So yeah. Yeah. almost everything else, there's a role. Yeah. Once you snipe that bridge, no role, no nothing. That no ship, the, the ship it's is done. considered crippled. Yeah. It's a smaller, harder target, but it's a definite target. And this is what Jim was talking about before. Almost all of the really, really vulnerable stuff in the ship is in the back. Yeah. But just so that the game didn't turn into a one tactic only works pony. It is possible, as Justin has just demonstrated, to take out a ship from the front. You have to get really close. You have to be really kind of, you know, you have, to, you have to get, you, you have, you have to get really gutsy with it. You have to win initiative, and then not only do you have to hit a lot, then you have to hit a lot in the right spot mm -hmm. with the right weapons in the right order, mm -hmm. and uh, partially through skill and also just a little bit of good old fashioned luck. Yeah. Well, we have more shooting to do. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. So the war zone. I think we'll have, I will have fire next. Now, uh, the war zone. It's where you pick do you want to pick the heavier target, his light cruiser, mm. or do you want to go for maybe something that's going to be a little easier to take out and go for the destroyer? I think I'll go for the destroyer. All right, that's probably be a good six call. shots, starting on 11. He gets all Plus his guns. No, his it's not six shots. It's uh, all his guns. Oh. It's 12, 12 shots. 12 shots, okay. Yes. So 12 shots. In fact, I'll go six and six just for a giggle. Okay. Okay. So, starting on 11. That's completely legal. He can fire one gun at a time if, if he, he really wants, wants to. to. And if he manages to knock out that destroyer and he has like three guns left, I'm going to put them in a light cruiser and yeah. see what happens. Well, I'll start with the, the two front two with six shots. Starting on 11, plus two is 13, minus your rear shield. Oh, uh, four. So, looking at nines. Nines again. So, so six nines. Nines are lower. All six. Yep. And a couple wow. of nines in there. Yep. Nice. Oh, so each of those whoa. is going to be doing four damage. Yep. So these are smaller real guns. It's only a now light this cruiser. Is, we're going to roll a different dice. It's basically okay. the equivalent of a six-inch gun the whole game that carries on a light cruiser for those of you out there the who uh, follow naval combat. The whole game we've been rolling against the heavy, which is oh. a D6 for damage. Yeah. A destroyer has a different damage template. Ah. So, so if a, you'll a see, destroyer has a much smaller, yeah, obviously. Yeah, four. It only goes through four. Just gotcha. for super quick comparison. That was the heavy cruiser uh -huh. that typically weighs about 120,000 tons. Yeah. That's a destroyer, weighs about 50,000 tons. Like so now we're using D force. Okay. D6 is a third of your damage rolls yeah. off. So I've got six hits, so I'll roll five and reroll one. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Alrighty. Nice grouping. Uh, those fours, no. Yeah, th uh, that one and four could be better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we said that these are four-point railguns? Four-point railguns, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll do the one first. One, two, three, four. Skips off. Mm -hmm. Then we do the four. Get the bad news out of the way first. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. I just lost aft mass drivers. I just lost sensors. Okay. Uh, yep, so then there's one in number two. One, two, three, and that skips over to here. Mm -hmm. Another one in number, oh, then two three. more in three. One, two, three, in the engines. Boom, and another one. This shell goes through the shields, through the armor, through the outside of the ship, and explodes in the engine room. And I have one to reload Boom. because of one, the success. Boom, one, two, and then hits the aft cargo bay. And then the last one for one. Oh, what? Hits number one, that hits, down goes the aft shields. One, two, three, four. So that's the uh, situation that we're looking at at the end of that first fire phase. So. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four hits in, oh, it's like one, two, three, four, five, five hits, hits in uh, engines and reactors. This destroyer is already in really, really big trouble. Now, this is when you pause. Yeah. Because there's a chance you want to look at your numbers. Yeah. And it's a die roll to see whether or not it breaks off. If you're at 70, 80, 90%, it's, you're going to power it down, mm. throw your guns on something else. If you're only yeah. at 10%, it's going to power down. Yeah. You keep shooting. So here's how we make an informed decision. So this, these are all the main charts of the game. You probably can't read this, but that's okay. Uh, just to show you where it is on the sheet. Each class is listed here. We're looking at a destroyer. It's right about in there in the middle. Okay? A destroyer breaks off on a 7 plus on a D6. That's its starting number that it has to flee when it takes damage in a critical component. Yeah. That number gets adjusted for every critical box that's actually been hit. Gotcha. So it started off at a seven plus, it's taken five total internal component boxes that are marked in red that are critical, 
That's one engine block there, two engine blocks, three engine blocks, and then two boxes in reactor. The entire uh, starboard side reactor room has already been completely decompressed and on fire. So one, two, three, four, five. So seven minus five. Do you feel confident in rolling a two plus on a D6? Yes. Then maybe you want to put those guns somewhere else. Then you put those yeah. guns somewhere the else. The trade off is if you roll a one, yeah. that ship stays in. That's fine. USS Ariskany DSGN 791 has done that many times. <laughs> there's a reason she's a famous ship. That's right. why it's, there's, it looks like a lot, but really this one sheet and your ship yeah. sheet's all you need. Yeah. It's all you need. All right, so another six shots and the other one in the app. Another okay, six shots. Okay, now we're putting yep. the ships into the light cruiser. Warren into likes shooting cruiser. things on the I bottom. One. You do miss one. So that's five. Now these are slightly, are they the same number of guns? Of oh, uh, the six, that's right. Same weapon. Same it's the same ship. Yep. Four points each. Uh, yeah, it's all seven gigawatt real guns. Now this is a different ship okay, class, yeah. so we need a different die. Now right. we're now now we're in a light cruiser, and here's where it gets a little weird. If I ever really get serious about getting this game out there, I'll have to make up some more custom dice. Basically, what we need is a D5. Yeah. So destroyers were a D6. Heavy cruisers were a D. I'm sorry. Heavy cruisers were a D6. Destroyers were a D4. Light cruisers are a D5. Yeah. So what we do is we roll D5, D10s, and divide. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have. Those two tens are read as five. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's one hit in the reactor. That two is read as a one. One, two, three. It skips off. That six is read as a three. One, two, three. And we see which way it goes. It goes to port. So that's this way. Mm -hmm. um, and seven is a seven becomes a four. No, seven's a four. That's right. One, two, three. And that automatically goes out port to their five. Mm -hmm. Okay, this ship just got beaten up a little bit, uh, the same as the other one. She did lose aft mass drivers and sensors. She did take one box in reactor. Mm -hmm. But, and this, just for quick comparison, this ship is in, in nearly, in a, nearly, as, the, nearly as much danger. Light cruiser start off, starts off at a 10 plus, because it's bigger, it has yeah. bigger engines, beefier reactors, more yeah. redundancy, more engineering compartments. It starts off at a 10 plus and you've only done one box of damage. Yeah. So you'd have to roll nine plus on a D6. Impossible. Impossible. She's not in trouble, not in immediate trouble yet. But you've opened the, the door as oh, it Oh yeah, you've, yeah, you've definitely. Made she, yourself known. You she knows still, you're there, that's for sure. You still have your other two ships to shit in yes. the back of the HMS Port Ram. Here we go, here's where we This is where I can kind of sense some peeing coming. Yes. Yeah, let's hope so. But let's we've already taken out his heavy. Yeah. And possibly a destroyer. Yeah. So we can keep that in our minds. I think that's, that's a good round of shooting. Yeah. The Gato is already fired, so and then yeah. the Gato's crippled, so she's she's out of gas. Yeah. So here comes my light cruiser, the IJN Sendai, a Hokkaido class, old school, uh, six gigawatt railgun uh, light cruiser, much like yours in design. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight six gigawatt railguns. Four, there's four more. Now, does she have the CIC? She has no CIC. She is an old, old, old ship. She starts off at a point blank range of 11 mm -hmm. plus zero, no gunnery bonus. Mm -hmm. So I start off with a 10. Minus Sorry, four. an 11. Uh, five. Aft minus shields. five, aft shields. Aft shields, minus five. Okay. So I start off with a six to hit. This could save my ass right now. Most of these ships do have much stronger uh, shielding on the uh, on the aft. Um, the reason why he wasn't shooting at five shields before against my destroyer is it's a destroyer. Mm. Uh, destroyers tend to have a little bit weaker shielding and uh, ECM than, than their bigger their bigger sisters. So sixes are lower. Ooh, there's some misses in there. Oh yeah. So we got five hits. Yeah. All right. How many points apiece? These are three points apiece. So these go just go three points straight down. Okay. Yeah. And these are you know, on a heavy cruiser, so these sixes. That's How many was that you said? Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. I can work with that. Yep. So two is three points. Three straight deep in two. Two. Three. Uh huh. Then six deep in three. One, two, three, four, five. A couple in the engines. Okay. Three <coughs> and four. One, two, three. And three and six. One, two, Three. Not bad. You, Not bad. You, you dug into my aft shields and a little bit of my engines, my, my starboard engines. We now fire our four 15 terabyte EPCs. These are a little bit bigger, but I only have four of them. As opposed to, what did I say, eight on the other one? Uh, and three of those hit. Uh -huh. One of them missed. 
these go four deep. Well, uh, they go three deep and then one more in the next column. Uh, five, five, so five, five, five and four, yeah. Center, center mass, so, so I go three deep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, we'll, we'll do number four. four. Two, three, okay. and then I go out. You go outboard, correct, so that would be one more point in mm -hmm. number five. That's okay. the four points that accounts for on okay. my 15. So one, two, three, and then out one. Yep. Do I go to the outside or the inside? These are actually EPCs, so they actually come all the way in. It bleeds in. Yeah, it bleeds so in. One. It's yep. quote unquote liquid damage. And now the same damage. thing again. One, two, three, and, and one. So my, my sensors are down. One of my engine bays is completely out. Reactors have took a hit, and the other engines have took a hit. So you've done a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points in the red zones. In the red zone. Eight okay. points in the red zone for a heavy. She's getting there. She's getting there. She's definitely getting there. It's not by any means definite. Mm. Uh, and now I have my destroyer, yeah, which is probably also knocked out. But, but as because it's a heavy, he still has to keep firing because she's yeah. not definite yet. Yeah. Oh, she's not even close. I think I think right now I have to roll a six on a d six. So I'm, yeah. I'm definitely not there yet. Okay, Mr. Tsurakawa is. Um, I have a grand total of eight five gigawatt railguns. It's a destroyer. These are much smaller guns. Um, and uh, what was our my number? Six? six. So I hit three times. Three times. Uh -huh. These only go in uh, two blocks of damage. Yep. These are a little... Oof, one, lucky. One, two. Nice. The one part of the ship you still had armor on. One, two, three, four. Yep, and then... And then one and two. So that's two more in the engine. So we're okay. at ten reds? Ten reds, yeah. And my last two guns are two 40-kilogram plasma projectors. These are old-school, Russian-built, basically space flamethrowers. <laughs> they do incredible amounts of damage at point-blank range. Their damage falls off very, very quickly. That's their kind of their drawback. Their other drawback is that they don't do damage penetrating. They do damage in kind of a f flat, broad, like a, like a spray paint pattern. That could um, be good for you right now. It's good for me now. There are times when you want to fire, and people do get very, very tactical and very gamey with, I fire my plasma projectors first and my cyclic emitters first, and then my deep penetrating rail guns, mm -hmm. torpedoes, and, uh, and lasers, you know, to get deep down into his critical components. Do I reverse that? So we're going to see what happens here. I've only got two of these, but they are big. Roll, they are. Stop. Oop, I have to roll to hit. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and my chance is a six. Seven, seven, seven. Here we go. Miss it. Oh! Woo! Denied. Sake! <laughs> it's time for some more sake. <laughs> Come by. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's not Chinese. Sorry, that's Japanese. That, Come by. Come by is Japanese. Oh, sorry. That would have probably sunk that heavy that cruiser. That would have definitely... Yeah. There's a chance. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a chance, but oh, that would have made no. it definite. Yeah. Okay, now we get into the fun part. We get into resolution. See, I ill wished okay. advice for you, Josh. We've done all of our fire. None of our torpedoes hit, and we've yeah. done all of our gunnery. So now we're on to the resolution phase where yeah. we just see, okay, what's left, <laughs> in the words of uh, now, Kirk in, in Star Trek II. Yeah, uh, we like that twelve for my heavy because I've got two in the magazine too. That's true. We start off with our um, aforementioned uh, Japanese heavy cruiser. We already know that her bridge is hit. Nothing else matters. She's out of the battle. So, her counter stays on the board, and her counter is going to continue to move at her last facing and velocity until she leaves the map or hits something. I'm already looking at where I'm going. This is another thing you want to do in this game. You want to be never pointing towards a planet yeah. at the end of your turn. Because if you get hit and you lose power, it's time to go for those lifeboats because that ship is gone. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of my heavy cruiser. Now we go to my light cruiser, which only has one box of heavy, uh, one box of reactor damage to it. Uh -huh. Okay, we looked at before. Um, the good news is um, she starts off at a 10 plus, so she's okay as yeah. far as being crippled or not. She does have some things she has to take care of. She's lost her aft mass drivers, uh -huh. so she goes down to a 17. She's lost uh, her sensors. She's now at a negative one to hit for the rest of the game, and that looks like it. Um, and the sensors, aft cargo doesn't have any effect. Okay, the way we normally do it is we just check to see if the ship is out of the battle or not, and if the ship is out of the battle, then you don't deal with all the other details. It's just out. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But if the ship has somehow survived damage, then you go into the nitty-gritty. Some of these boxes do have game effects. You can take hits and sensors that reduce your target number to hit. If you take damage in your bridge, but not the entire bridge, your bridge is just damaged, that's a penalty to your initiative. You can lose weapons, you can lose torpedoes, you can lose mass drivers. Uh, maneuvering thrusters affect your ability to turn. Hits in your engines and your reactors reflect the number of total thrust points you have. The game does get very Star Trek II, where 
he takes that second torpedo when Khan blows him up in you know, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and he just yells out to the engine room, Scotty, what's left? <laughs> and he doesn't even ask for the damage report. It's a shorter list if you just tell me what I still have. Uh, She's not like quite there yet, but... Because it doesn't make the whole thing, did I blow it up? Oh, nothing happened. Yeah. The damage starts to have a cumulative effect. Yeah, you, you can feel, I mean, like, looking at my, my heavy here, I just imagine there is a gaping vacuum burning hole there. Just that ship is now a comet because she's just launching leaking atmosphere that's on fire and glowing yeah. clouds of molten metal into space. Yeah. Okay, but let's see if that destroyer made it, if we were able to yeah. take out two ships okay, this round. Okay, so this destroyer, one more time, had... One, two, three, four, five boxes of critical damage. Uh -huh. In other words, in a box that's outlined in red. I'm hoping it's coming through on the camera, okay? Oh, yeah. So, um, and her crippled number starts, her, her target number to cripple started off at a seven plus. Uh -huh. Minus five, it's a two plus. It's time for you to roll that dice and see if she loses power. For a two. two. Barely, the lights were flickering for a minute. The captain thought they could have it. He's calling down to engineering. Engineering thought they could put it together. Then a last secondary explosion happened, some coolant failed, and now the ship is also crippled and out of power. And here's the really good news. If we go down to the overhead camera <laughs> just for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's Un time to head for the lifeboats. Unfortunately, it's heading right for the planet. She's heading right for the yeah. planet. There's I'm gonna guessing be if you're playing campaign, this You've ship just is lost like a completely a ship. screwed. Yep. That, that ship it is cannot be salvaged, it cannot be repaired, there's yeah, no rolling, the it's gone. Once it's off the map, it still can be repaired. It yep. depends on who wins the battle, it depends yeah. on how lucky the ship is, and there's commander's luck bonuses we can get into if we have time at yeah. the end. There's all kinds of campaign rules. Yeah. The, if you're in a full campaign game, half of the game takes place between battles as a good campaign. I like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah We've that, had, that that's, that's where that's where um, the the name Ariskany actually comes from. I was doing some writing for the Red American Revolution, mm -hmm. and I was writing about the Battle of Ariskany, and then I joined Beasts of War as I was in the middle of this other project, and I was like, you know, everything is Ariskany, everything is Ariskany, and I just happened to have USS Ariskany. She actually is a Dark Star U.S. Navy destroyer. <laughs> she's the luckiest ship in the fleet. She's still she's the this first ship I ever made up six years ago. She's still running around. That's of course, it, it goes back to the Battle of Ariskany for the American Revolution, but American American warships are named after, like we have USS Yorktown, USS Bunker Hill. I like it. All so right. now let's check to see if yeah. there's any chance the heavy survived. The, the heavy is currently on 12. 12, okay. 12. Heavy cruiser, if we can see that on the chart, so I'll solve it a 14 plus. Okay, I've, she's lost 12. Mm -hmm. So I have to roll a two plus, because yeah. you just subtract one from the other and you come up with a new target number? See, this is what happens. Americans come over and they mess up Coleraine all the time. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Americans making a mess in Coleraine again. Yeah. So th this, time, this time it was the Japanese, it, it wasn't us. It was true, it wasn't the Americans. It was true. <laughs> okay, technically here we go. I need a two plus on here. No! Oh! Denied. This is on camera, folks. This, this, this is was not camera. trick dicery. Denied. Denied. The coal rain is still stands, in it. Stands tall. Yeah. Somehow, Scotty down in the engine room has maintained power, despite the fact he only has one reactor uh, room left. I the guarantee only you, role. I know who the chief engineer on this ship is. Who? Lloyd. There you go. Lloyd, <laughs> uh, Commander Lloyd is down in the engine room. Lloyd going, has kept the coal rain running. What are you guys doing up there? We're trying to run an engine room down I, here. I need more duct tape. Yep. All the duct tape. Literally they, they, the only role that could have saved everywhere. it. A two would have would have crippled that a ship. A two would have, as as evidenced. Yeah. Yep. You all saw it on camera. It was fourteen minus twelve equals two. Two plus. Now, because I've taken that kind of damage, do I have to keep rolling every resolution round, or is it just if no? You only more if only you if I take if only if I hit a, another critical component. Mm. If I mark off one more box of critical damage, about it again. That ship is now I have to roll a one plus. Yeah. You can't not roll a one plus. Right. Now so the only I, point where I should just be going for max velocity and get the hell off the table. It depends on whether or not you're in a campaign game and how much you like this ship and this character. I like this ship and, and this character. <laughs> so, now the only downside to surviving is now you have more bookkeeping. Yeah. So. I took a lot of damage there. Yeah. So a complete engine loses you a thrust point. So your thrust is now down to a three. Uh huh. All right. Now, what have we lost completely? A complete yeah, sensor. Ship is by no means so a you're at right now. Um, sensor damage. So you're at um, negative one to hit. Mm -hmm. Nothing else complete here. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Aft shields. Aft shields are so gone. So this yep. shield is gone. I now right. have to subtract nothing from my target to hit. Mm -hmm. To hit if he's hitting you need to help. straight on the back end. Yeah. If he's you know like Warren and he likes the back end. Hey. Warzone. I have All one right. ship left. Yes, I do. Need this help. mass driver is dead. 
Yes, Port Bow Mass Driver's dead, so you can cross that out. And then you cross out that number and circle the next one. Oh, um, Perfect. 25 on Mass Driver. Uh, that has no effect. Cargo. Is that, is that shields? Uh, port shields, yeah. They're port gone. shields. So Port Bow shields are gone as Not well. Not down to our shields. Yeah. And I actually that surprise oh, up uh, sensors. Yeah, sensors here are gone. Sensors so. here, so you're actually at negative two to hit. Uh -huh. And then over here... Nothing's completely filled in. That counts. What's this? That's, uh, I think, a hangar. Officer's quarters. Oh, that's right. They don't oh, know. No, officer's quarters. Officers. They can sleep in the bath. It's fine. Yep. Okay. And uh, that's My. the only ship that had damage. So yeah. you're done. Yeah, James was kind of going focus fire on that. So I poor James... I can't believe she survived. I can't believe it. Now the Japanese Navy has like fables of this 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 Irish ghost ship that just won't die. It's it's the uh, Davy Jones of space, not Davy Jones, uh, Flying Dutchman. Yeah, and you're down to one. I'm down ship. to one heavily damaged light cruiser. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, let's begin turn three, shall we? It'll be faster. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the benefits to the game is as ships blow up, you're sad, but the turns go faster. Yeah. So you're happy. Okay. So Corian first. Uh, for a four. Uh, now her thrust is only a three. Three becomes a seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. But uh, her tactics bonus? Uh, is nine. Nine. So, yep. nine. Uh, we then have the dignity. For a one, uh, becomes seven, becomes nine. Yes. You did say you were sleepy. That could be why the dignity is yeah. lower initiative. And then the war zone for a six. On point. Also, he's, what, he's what was his thrust at the end of the last one? Um, I think it was... He matched. Yeah, so what, what the other one was? What, what they, weren't they both an eight? I'm pretty sure they were both an yeah. eight. Yeah. Okay. Because they're both in the same hex now. So yeah. six plus five is 11. Plus is 13. two is 13. Those energy drinks help. They do. Can they I do. I have uh, one dice for my one ship Your I one have ship. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be nice to your guests? I come here to show them a game, and all they do is just I'm know, a guest too. This, this, this is stardust. the curse of game designers. They come yep. in and they do not win at their game for a one. And I roll, and one. roll one. Yeah, that's because my they're already starting to abandon ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one plus five is a six. So you're going first. Yes, yeah. I'm going first. Actually, that's not true. Incapacitated ships. Incapacitated ships go first. Ah, go first. Okay. So my. Um, Destroyer, the Surakawa, had a velocity of eight. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four. That's as far as she gets because she crashes into the planet. <laughs> Hopefully some people made it off before that happened. Okay, and this, um, the heavy cruiser had a, uh, the Nagato had a, a speed of five. So she's kind of leisurely. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. She's picking up the lifeboats. Yeah. From now you do continue, to, well, she's not doing anything. She's, if anything, she's launching lifeboats. In a more serious campaign game or whatever, in a scenario-driven game, there's boarding, especially oh. for crippled ships. Oh, you right. can steal ships from other players. Oh. And then the next game, I want my ship back. And yeah. you can like launch an attack against that ship and try and steal her back. Nice. There's, uh, you, or if it's like a grudge match, you, you can still continue to target that ship. Oh. Until, until you it actually explodes. blow it up. Oh. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, that would be a very mean player. It, it, is. it is a mean player, is. especially when people like put... That? Uh, not usually. Good. Um, I don't like it whenever people take stuff away from you, Campion. I like the chance to get stuff back. Oh, absolutely. Now, there is a thing, this it may not come into this, but if you happen to be pointing in a certain way, okay, here's your ship, uh, and it gets crippled, and now it's flying this way, okay, you're trying to target another ship, maybe you're pointing this way, but the last remaining enemy ship is somewhere way over here, and your torpedoes cannot come to bear. You can target, ostensibly, that wreck. Yeah. It's legal. Uh, it's a legal target. You can fire your torpedoes and you know use it as target acquisition to fire your torpedoes. And then when the movement phase for the torpedoes comes, you can move them wherever you want. Yeah. You move them back against that target. So uh, that's why it's important they wreck stay on the board because yeah. you can still use them even if you're not going to be mean and blow them up. Gotcha. Yeah, for a number of reasons, uh, derelict ships that haven't actually exploded, or if they do explode, it matters where they explode because they can do collateral damage against other ships in the area. They can be boarded. They can be used for targeting uh, lock-ons. They are they are still tactically significant. Mm -hmm. So now I have to move my one ship that isn't quite dead yet. Yeah. I was going to say, wow, there's a lot of ships left on the board. But oh yeah, they're all British. <sighs> okay, I'm looking. I'm the, here's here's we get a little bit serious with and the tactics. 
Um, I'm looking at the Colerain, which is uh, still in the fight, but heavily damaged. Yeah. She's lost two shields. I'm seeing if I can take the Colerain with me. Mm -hmm. um, and I know she only, she's moving pretty fast. She's moving at a velocity of seven, and she only has three of thrust. She's got a heck of a time moving around. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a tactic here that I call trying to save some small amount of dignity, no pun intended. <laughs> All right, so my current velocity is a eight. Uh -huh. So with an eight, I can make two and a half facing changes, or I can go one, two, three, and then make two facing changes. I'm going at a pretty inconvenient speed here. Damn, 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 damn. Okay. I'm going to one, two, three, four. I'm going to reduce velocity by three and then make two facing changes. Okay. That's my five thrust points. So one, two, three, four, and then he does a jackknife turn, hard to port, and he does this. This means that he's partially screened by the planet. Mm -hmm. It's tough to get torpedoes in from a planet service. You really can't do it because you have to enter from that hex. Mm -hmm. Those hexes are covered by an astrophysical body. My stern is kind of in a spot where it's going to be tough for you to get at it uh -huh. at your current velocities. And I'm hoping that at least some of my weapons uh, or torpedoes are going to be able to come to bear on the Colerain. Because the Colerain is not going to be able to get too far away from me, uh -huh. especially with fire arcs, given her current velocity, her beginning thrust, and her state of damage. Also, last round we forgot to launch torpedoes. This is very true. And oh, wow. that's fine. Oh, you know what? I spent all that time blathering about torpedoes. And how you can use them to uh, to uh, fire, you know, use derelict ships to use yeah. them as targets. And I was actually supposed to be doing that. Yeah. So this ship was here. Yes. Yeah. My torpedoes are on the star port, port bow mm -hmm. and starboard bow, yeah. where torpedoes usually are on most ships. Yeah. So basically, I had no targets, but I can fire half of my torpedoes, quote uh, unquote, derelict. at the at the Colerain. Yeah. And now that they're launched, they're going to go somewhere else. Ah, okay. Unless I decide to put them in the Colerain, just because I can. Yeah. Same. Okay. And we're broadsided, so yeah, the Colerain can shoot all 12 of hers, so yeah. if you want to put those One, there. One, two, three, four, five, you are not broadsided. We were broadsided. Before movement, this is true. were broadsiding on the... What? Before yes. the before the Hulk drifted, I apologize. we correct. were broadsiding, yeah. it was there, we could target before it drifted away. Yeah. And you had me broadside with the other Whoa. one, yes. Wait a second, so... Okay, quick, quick rewind here. That ship was here. Yep. Yep. I could not have launched three torpedoes. No, because at the time that derelict wasn't there. All I could of the have, ships so were behind. instead of launching my starboard bow torpedoes at the Colerain here, at the time the Colerain was here, I no, launched the my. Here. Still this there. Is your one. Not the, the I'm sorry. At the at the uh, not the Colerain the. Um, that's the Colerain. Yeah, that's I know. The I know. I'm getting I'm getting the two cruisers mixed up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's your one. So my ship was here. Or mm -hmm. My ship was here. Yeah, the one, one ship that's left. Was here. He yep. could use that ship as a targeting focus for launching his port bow torpedoes. Yes. Okay. okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So we're still legal. And then the... Good catch. Thank you very uh, much. Then your My other destroyer one was can also launch... Broadsided so I can launch... I believe she's got four or eight. Um, she has... I think she's got two and two. Two and two, so it would just be go. two. She can launch, she can launch all four. Uh, well, no, because they're the standard ones. So they're port bow and starboard bow, so it would only be two. Oh, that's right, starboard bow. I'm used to the Iron Duke, which is port bow and st which is bow yeah, and bow stern. Yeah. yeah, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah. So that, that's a nice... That's what? why she's my favorite. <laughs> that's 14 torpedoes in the water? Yep. And she <sighs> has no mass driver aid. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is going to get nasty. All right, so now mine goes. So the cool rain... See, he's got this game better than us. We missed it. Spend three to increase velocity to ten. Ooh. And it's time to boogie. There you go. One, two, three, four. Oh. Off I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, she is running. And she is still inverted. But the neat thing is... Lloyd, all ahead flank. You know I only have one reactor left down here, right, Warren? <laughs> she can still ping, <laughs> even though you declared her running. Yeah. If she can hit it, yeah. she can hit it. She oh, has 10 gigawatt railguns. She can hit it with her, yeah, with her aft batteries. Two 10 gigawatt rail, well, four 10 gigawatt railguns in the stern. Yeah. yeah. 
So. And they, of course, we, I know they can reach her that distance. Mm -hmm. She has a terrible fire arc, but okay. yeah, she can still look square hits. Now, now's the now's the challenging part: where you're going to hit. Yeah. Because to get in behind where you'd already done the damage, you yeah. got to put your nose to that planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the dignity with her thrust of six and speed of eight. Well, velocity of eight, mm -hmm. costing two for turns. Mm. I have an idea. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Oh. I know what he should do. I'm going to see if he picks the same thing. He's been playing smart One, the whole game. He probably two, will. Three. Turn. Four. Five. Six. Seven and eight. Like so. You have to move forward. Seven and eight. Oh, sorry. Damn, this blue tag keeps coming off of here. Yeah, so it's just here pointing this way. Because that way I'm, I'm cutting the edge of the planet, but I've still got a nice line on you that I can maybe do some stuff to. Mm -hmm. We then have the, the war zone. Uh, she is in perfect condition. It costing two to turn. She should be able to do the same thing. Uh, yeah. Well, she has one thrust less, because like, she's a light cruiser. That's thrust right. of five. She's a five, not a six. Uh, Oh yeah, sorry, five. But yeah, still going at eight. So one, two, actually one. Two. What's one? Uh, sorry, yeah. Yep. So what I need to do is turn for two. Yep. And start spending to decrease by three to go five. Then uh, actually. Stop. If you spend three to decrease to five, it only costs you one to turn. And technically, you're not allowed to re to uh, change your velocity in the middle of the turn. All right. But actually, the legal way is more beneficial to you. She's right. Yeah. Slow down no. to the five, and now it only costs you one to make a facing yeah. change. One, two, three, four, five. Right. There you go. Bro side. And not on the planet. Yep. Uh, do you want to do the same thing with the destroyer? No. No? Okay. No, the destroyer is fine where it is, because... If he's moving forward, I can maybe swing in on that rear okay. end again. Oh, look at I'm him thinking ahead. Because uh, I've got the Dignity going at speed 8, which is still pretty good for the turn. I can get three rotations there. Yes, perfect. See, I'm gonna, Justin, you're going to come to the States and help me beat Jim next time. <laughs> they always gang up on me. It's fun. <laughs> and so, torpedo movement then. That's correct. He's calling out the phases before I even have a chance to do it. It really is easy uh, to pick up. It is. So, everything. Yeah, are these torpedoes are so close. Are coming right on the other end. Right on the back end. Oh, look, it makes a pretty picture. Yeah, have you ever watched uh, World of Warships? World of War, yes, the, the video game, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a guy on there who does, uh, I think he names himself Eurobeats, and he does an initial D <laughs> soundtrack every time he's just avoiding torpedoes. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I know what you're talking about. All right, and where's your legs going? Oh, uh, these three back here on yep. the uh, dignity. All right. Okay. All right. Now we resolve mass drivers against torpedoes. Yes. All right. so. I'm pretty sure these three are out of gas, but we'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, they do have the electronic warfare bonus coming off of my light cruiser there. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the dignity's mass driver defense? 16. It looks like a 16. You have to add one for your CIC. Uh -huh. But 17. cancel out the one. Cancel that out for my electronic warfare bonus. Uh, 16. So, so roll a D6. rolling a D6 on the 16 column. Press three. Three on the 16 column is four torpedo shot down. You just barely got them. I'll take that. And there we go. And then yours? Oh, God. Okay, here we're finally going to see some torpedo hits. This is good for the video. Yeah. Right, because I don't think I'm going to shoot all those down. All right, the uh, Sendai has a reduced um, uh, uh, anti-aircraft capability or anti-aerospace capability. Uh -huh. She started off with 20 but lost one mass driver mount. So you get knocked down to a 17. Uh -huh. She's also taking hits to her sensor suite. So her sensor suite is knocked down uh, by one. Uh -huh. So what that means is that when I roll my D6, I'm going to get my plus two for my CIC. No. Oh, no, she's not getting CIC bonus. No. I'm going to get plus one for my electronic warfare, minus one for my sensor damage, and I'm only getting on the 17 column instead of on the... Uh, uh, instead of on instead of on the uh, the uh, twenty column, mm -hmm. so I'm on the seventeen row. I find that real fast. I'm gonna roll as high as I possibly can. I roll one. a one. Are you people kidding me with these dash <laughs> rolls right now? These are not faked, guys. I shot down exactly two torpedoes. Take out two. 
12 torpedoes are coming in to hit my shields. In the rear. Do yeah. you still have shields? Yes, in the I rear. do still have okay. shields. Okay, that is saving you. Oh my god. Now we get to roll torpedo damage. Thank you this for letting this opportunity possible. This is great for the video. This is right. great for the video. All right, because now I get to show off everything that happens. The we base, may even get to see a ship explosion. The base to hit for a class 4 torpedo is 12. An 8. An 8. Yeah. Okay. Okay. An eight. Now, an does eight? that ship have any? Uh, oh, because the uh, torpedoes came from different different people. It came well, from different people. All of uh, these were from the coal rain. Were from the coal rain. The oh, coal okay. rain does have a plus one CIC. Yes. So you get a plus one bonus. However, sensor damage minus two. Sensor damage minus two. So you're at a net negative one off mm -hmm. your roll. So it's eight minus three for my shields. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, eight minus five for my shields makes three. Mm -hmm. Minus one for your net sensor damage mm -hmm. plus CIC bonus. So it's a grand total of two. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at twos? Twos. twos. But you 12. get 12 chances. Okay. It's not an easy roll, but if you get them, they're going to hurt. Two, four, six. Yeah. Eight, ten, twelve. Twos or ones? To quote my friend Jerry, be lucky. Oh, no. Goose None. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> what happened? That's not fair, Jen. Nah. That would have that, that, that would have made that would have made a good. You know what? Do we want to save like two or three of those hit just to see how to it works? the mechanics? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think say, this game's pretty much on the last leg. Yeah, yeah totally. I would totally agree with that. We could just even say one to show the yeah, mechanics. Yeah, just for the mechanics. Just so it's um, not too these much. These are yeah. Let's uh, let's they're give class uh, fours. They're class fours. Yeah, let, let's say uh, let's say three torpedoes hit. Okay. Because right. really, rolling twelve. Yeah. 12 on 2, that means about one sixth of them is going to hit. You're going to get at least two. We'll say he yeah. got a little lucky and got three. All right. Cool. So well, that's. Do it, do it in a different color pen so we can see that it's right. you know, not actual game damage. This is yeah. cool. theoretical. All right. So that's three torpedoes have hit through the shields. And I have pre existing damage on my stern um, thanks to previous gunnery fire. Okay. So here is the, um, the, this, here's the light cruiser. Uh -huh. That's about to get hit by three torpedoes. Uh -huh. She has, as we can see here under the close cam, she's already got some pre-existing damage on her stern thanks yep. to uh, previous gunnery fire. Yes. So now we're going to roll hit locations on those three torpedoes. So class four torpedoes do predictably four boxes of damage. Uh -huh. They do them in a cavitation pattern. They drill in and then they explode inside the ship. Ah, I see. So yeah, torpedoes are nasty once they Especially hit. Especially in can, the engines. It's, as, as you can see, it's tough to actually get torpedoes to hit, but once they do, it yeah. gets it gets scary. All right, so on that D five, yeah. D five, yep. yep. So seven, seven, four. All right, so, so that's, that's a two and two and number four. Two, four, four. So that's a two and a four and a four. Yep. So let's do the two first. Boom, impact, one, two, three, and then four is boom, one, two, three, boom, one, two, med bay. All right, so here's the damage pattern that we're looking at for this uh, light cruiser getting hit by three uh, British Mark IV torpedoes. Mm -hmm. One here, or class four torpedoes, one here, and then it kind of does like a rook and chess over. Mm -hmm. One here does his little thing, one here, and then does his little rook move in chess. Uh -huh. So, I don't think we'll see a ship explosion, but we definitely saw a ship get heavily, heavily damaged. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five critical boxes hit, uh -huh. and the light cruiser starts off on a 10 plus. So, looking at fives? Yeah, a five, five plus, plus to crippler. Mm. We might get lucky and not even need to do a gunnery round. No. no. And a three. Gunnery round it is. Gunnery round it is. All righty. Yeah. Do so, your worst. Yeah. Uh, I'll start with the cool rain. Okay. So go for those two 10 gigawatt, uh, well, four 10 gigawatt real guns. The back, her her stern guns. Stern guns, yeah. One yep. more. Uh, you're at 14, One so more. you're... Oh. 14, so your chance to hit is a seven. My forward shields are only a three. Ships are glass cannons from the front. So four... Minus so, another one, threes. Yep. From the net sensor damage in yes. my CIC. Yep. Correct. Uh, plus two for my gunnery. Yep. Oh, that's Fives. right. Fives. Yep. Uh, that'll be two, two hits. hits. Okay, how much damage? Uh, so we're in the fifth block. Yep. So one, two, three, four. Three damage. Cool. And then we got two hit locations. For two and three. Oh, it's a D5 for light cruiser. Oh, yeah. The it's okay. I should have stopped you as well. There we go. That's uh, four, and, four three. and three. Four and three. Navigation shield and hit on forward mass drivers, but they're both still functional. All right. That's fine. 
Let's go to the war zone. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. he has her broadside, it doesn't he? Yes, he, he does. Do, yeah. So and that's all twelve rail guns. Three, four. So he's starting on a nine. And no CIC bonus. No sensor damage. No. Um, but he does get his field. gunnery accuracy. So it's minus one from the nine eights. If I've done the math nine. right. You're correct. Yep. Holy mackerel, Let's that. take out the misses. And uh, that's it. Only three misses. So, so nine, nine hits. hits. Uh, and it's in the third bracket. So one, two, three. Three damage apiece. You might take okay. the ship out from the front. So roll those. All right. Let's just um, group together by similar number. A mm -hmm. little bit of bookkeeping up front. Yeah. Okay. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. These are three points each? Yes. So 15 points of damage in column one. Yes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You just knocked out the port side reactor from the bow. <laughs> you totally shaved down the whole side of the ship until you hit that port side to sell and just kind of went bing, blew it off the side of the ship. That ship might now be crippled. Yeah, we now have... Uh... Uh, one, two, three, three and, three, and three. Three and number three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Magazine hit. One, two, three. Life support hit twice. Bridge hit. One, two, three. Aft hangar hit. Aft weapons hit. Aft engines hit. From and the front. One in one, I think I did four. one too many. One too many. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. And then one in number four. And that's one, two, three. Okay. All right, so this ship is pretty much going to be toast no matter what happens, and let's count and see why. That's one in magazine. All right, so here's what happened to this ship. How's that for uh, some, some columns of damage here? So for critical damage, we have one hit here in magazine. Uh -huh. And then five. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So a grand total of six? Six. Uh -huh. Seven, eight, nine. Nine. In that reactor. Can you roll a one plus on a D6? Yes. I think you can do that. That ship is crippled. Even if the ship wasn't crippled, it has taken one, two, three, four, five, six boxes in core damage. If you want to go under uh, yeah, close camera quick. One. Those yeah. are the ones that are in this gray shield. These are the ones where actually crew casualties are really piling up. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, you've, you've, for one thing you hit was the medical bay. Yeah. So people that were already wounded, they get back to sick bay only to have a torpedo come through med bay. I mean, well, uh, it, is, it is a, it, a rail gun goes straight yeah. through the medical bay. It is a, uh, it is a, it is a charnel house inside mm -hmm. this like, cruiser here. So um, number wise, how it works out is you take that number of gray boxes, uh -huh. five I believe you said, right? Um, for core damage, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. So you go to light cruiser, um, core damage percent to break off, right? Yep. Uh -huh. So where'd it go? It's light cruiser Lost right it. there. Yep. Light so cruiser, it's... it goes over, it's 15% per core box. Mm -hmm. So 15% times six is 90. Mm -hmm. Even if the ship would survive, which it can't because you can't roll less than a one on D6, yeah. there's a 90% that the crew would make the captain flee. Yeah. So no matter what, this battle's over. Good job, sir. Good job. Here you go. Good job. I'm I serious. still can't believe the Cola Rain survived. We're going to put you up survived. in Florida I, so you can... Hey, don't, I, don't tempt me to go out for a visit. Oh, I, I have said to Jim I want to come visit you guys. Open invitation. You know this. If you can handle the heat and humidity. Yeah. Uh, I can stand Indy, but I don't know if I can stand Florida. Okay. Give it another month or two, then Florida's just beautiful. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, just, we're just coming up on the best part of the year. Hmm. All right, well, everybody, that has been Dark Star. Uh, if you're interested, go check it out in the projects. Uh, drop your comments for James below. Tell him what you think. Tell him how do you, how do you like your games like this to feel. This felt like something. Now I know we got very crunchy very quickly. Oh, yes. but this feels like a game that if you're being careful with your maneuvering and just how you're getting in there, this the, the, is a the, game, the, the, the game. The game. The game can go on for like three or four hours if you get really chess gamey with it. Mm. And again, this was just a straight out gunfight. There are battles where there are, isn't a single gun on the table. It's all mines, mm. torpedoes, marine dropships, fighters, bombers, scouts, assault boats. P putting tanks on planets. We have rules for orbital bombardment satellites. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, a civilian ships. If you're trying to attack some sort of a convoy, there's there, there's a lot going on here. These were this was definitely a stripped down. Mm. Oh, you want here's a quick introduction to Dark Star. You yeah. want you yeah. want to blow up a spaceship? You got spaceship? a bunch of heavy sluggers on the board, there but you, you can go. get your fast little frigates and your yeah. gunboats and be diving in and out. Yeah. And oh yeah, my friend Alex has ships that all they they have no guns. All they have is mass drivers. They're escort ships. All right. And he just parks them next to his heavy cruisers and says, "Come launch torpedoes at me." Yeah. All so, day. Yeah, yeah. So people get really stuck into the weeds on it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, everybody, get those comments in below. Thank you for watching. We will see you again another time. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming Let's Plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.